Recording in progress. Snapping in, we've been tapping in. We ain't never late. Dropping gems, we've been locking in. Now let's elevate. Took else to win, running laps again. This is steady race. People's champ, boy, yeah, you know I've been a heavyweight. Snapping in, we've been tapping in. We ain't never late. Dropping gems, we've been locking in. Now let's elevate. Took else to win, running laps again. This is steady race. People's champ, boy, yeah, you know I've been a heavyweight. <laughs> In <laughs> I was uh, I was trying to think of like a stone cold thing to do like I was like, I was like what it's like a, um one beer <laughs> what two beers what three beers <laughs> what? drink I, four beers I don't understand why this is so entertaining <laughs> what's going on y'all it's I been a long time <laughs> gone for a minute but we're back again heavyweight bros is in the building for episode 59 can you think of anybody that's a famous number 59? I tried to even Google it and they didn't even have nothing for me. No. The only NBA player to wear the number 59 was Rajon Tucker of the Milwaukee Bucks. I don't even know who that is. Wow. But I, for some reason, every time the random numbers come up, I always think Ron Artest. Because Ron Artest wears some stupid ass numbers. He wore his number at some point. Um, but it is Monday. August 22nd, I said, like, it's been, what, two weeks since the last video, stuff like that, so, like, grab your popcorn, whatever you need, get your bathroom breaks in, because it's about to be a long one. The timestamps is here for a reason. My man Pythagoras said our timestamps need timestamps, and I was like, yeah, I think for this one, I think he might be right. Um, as you watching. <laughs> hey, you right about that. As Before usual. we go any further, today's day is August 22nd, 2022. And that man got a good moon shirt on. Look at that man wearing his good moon shirt. I'm just trying to show support. He looks so comfy. He looks so comfy. Look There's so, there are so many of these shirts left in the box. I feel like somebody. Oh, here he go. Here on. he go. I've seen oh, more diabolical man. diabetics in the streets. Oh, than that. <laughs> my That's not because they had the shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> As usual, I am your host, the 5XL assassin, the diabolical diabetic, your boy, the big nasty. To my right is the high yellow hitman, the mm. freaky deacon, mm. Coach Buck, mm. my little dumb boy, <laughs> my man, Uncle Razor. What's right, going man, on, man? How coming. you doing? Good, man. I, I am excited to be potted, man. The way you had that card primed up lets me know that you're going to fling it so stupid. Oh, yeah. The time goes. A... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it's, it's a lot going on right now. You know, it's transition time, back to work time, sports kicking off. Um, There's a lot of stuff happening right now, but um, it's not an overwhelming feeling. It doesn't feel like too much is going on. Oh, look at that, that so, script. That script so, working a little overwhelming. Yeah, listen, I'm telling you, man. But hey, it's it's a good space to be in, man. I, I'm I'm enjoying myself. So, so I don't want to say it because I know how much you hate for people to say summer's coming to an end. But we are getting close to the S word going away. And <laughs> it doesn't feel terrible. Okay. Like, when do you think? All right. When's the official like last day of summer? When school starts? When school starts? <laughs> summer's over. Once <laughs> some babies come in the building, summer is gone. Oh man, <laughs> dear summer, I know you're gonna miss me. <laughs> but I mean, like I said, I know the docket is full. So, mm -hmm. like, I mean, we can just get straight into it and get and, like hit uh, some of these uh, digging in the crates if you want. All right. No diggity, no doubt. Mm -hmm. I, I must say. It is in my agenda. You didn't listen to that. None of these damn albums, dude. None of these albums did oh, I listen to. Oh, bro. Man, it's been I, two weeks. I don't listen to none of these albums, fam. I'm so sorry, man. I'm so Every time I sat down, I was like, yeah, I'm about, I'm about to start it right now. And I just be like, all right, let me look through. <laughs> <laughs> is it morning? <laughs> like, like, you know, something like, like that. Like, we got three albums to talk about. We got Rod yes. Wave. Yes. Um, we have the game, and yes. we have Meg Thee Stallion. And like, I feel like, can I, I, can I rate them in a blind eye without having listened to them? What do you mean, rank them or rate them? Rank them. Go ahead. What did I say? I said rate them. Yeah, you said rate them. My bad. Rank them. I was gonna say because rating an album without listening to it, and this is, is not based on like numbers or what everybody else thinks. I just. The Based quality on, of the albums on enjoyment from your perspective can can I kind of guess in which order you like the albums? Okay, go ahead. All right, I would go Meg, Rad Wave. Wait, is Meg one or number or three? Meg is. I'm, oh my goodness! Because you always do it backwards. I like go no one, one does listen like going, that. All right, I'll go three, two, one. Does that make you feel better? Okay. The game. Okay. Rod Wave. Mm -hmm. Meg the Stallion. Incorrect. 
Wow. So Rod is in front of Meg. Oh, that one. Let's talk about it. All right. All right. First album, Rod Wave. Okay. Is there a title feel, for the album? I just broke there it is. I feel like you should be looking up the titles of these albums while I'm talking about okay, these albums. Okay, go ahead. Since I got you. Since I'm going to be doing a I lot of jaw. I got right you. Now. I got you. Um, so Broadway's album came out. Um, it's, I thought it was pretty solid. And it's like, um, he's not somebody that I usually check for. But like when I hear some of his music, like I don't hate his music. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like some of the stuff comes around or whatever. Um, but like, so I guess like what I was looking for with this album was for him to like make me a fan. Mm-hmm. Beautiful I, mind. Beautiful mind. And I feel like it didn't do that. Like I was really? just like, like I was like, it was a cool listen, mm-hmm. but I was just also like his style. Like he's very much like, as we talk about like, Conway mm-hmm. is like, you know, what Conway does very well as a rapper is pain. It's like, I feel like that's what Rod Wave does. Like, like his little first line, like on this album is like, you ever felt worthless? And then I was like, damn, nigga. I was like, I was like, I was like I'm not trying to feel like this right now. Sheesh. Um, but like, I can, I can see why people who like Rod Wave like Rod Wave. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, there was a couple of tracks from here that I was like, I'll probably take and listen to a little bit more. Like when I say a couple, like I mean like two or three. Okay. Um, it's not the longest album. Like I want to say, I want to say it's only like twelve songs on it. I'll do my homework. Keep going. Um, but it's just like, uh, like I said, like a lot of it kind of like mushes together because like you, it's you're doing that sound for the whole album. Like there's no, I feel like there's no club track or like no like I love you track on here. Like everything is bro, like I'm down in the dumps type album. Bro, there are 24 tracks on this. Song. This is not that album. This can't be. A Beautiful Mind, Rod Wave. Some of them look like they're skits. So there's some of them that's like a minute like, long. That is. Some of them are like a minute long. Oh, there's only two that are a minute long. So you got Alone, Youngin, Never Get Over Me, Rolling Stone. That's not the album? I think that is the album. Is, there's no way that there's 24 joints with this album. Bro, this joint is listed at 24. Cold December is the last track. I think you might be right. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, there is 24 songs. And this is, <laughs> but, all right, but this is it. Like, it's 24 songs. This album, not only an, this album is only like an hour and eight minutes long. Yeah, I feel like the longest track is like three and a half minutes. Yeah, so, so like... It's not... It's not yeah, the, when I get to talking about the game, then you're going to realize like what I mean is like this album's not very long. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, no, I heard that joint was like two and a half hours or something. It is two hours I heard long. it was like sitting through a movie like Doom. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Uh, <laughs> now you completely like threw me off but yeah that's the thing is like this song, the the album is tight where mm-hmm. it's like it's only an hour and some change a lot of the songs are like two to three minutes long okay but i feel like sometimes it's like you're just listening to one long song so sometimes three or four songs sounds like it could have just been one song because like that's the vibe that i feel like he's in at all times mm-hmm. i will also say i don't know who does rod waves beats mm-hmm. but i feel like he's still getting beats off of like youtube like oh, yo shoot. get like yo give me a playboy cardi type beat like he's doing oh, that type shoot. of stuff like, like, cause there was a couple songs I was like, yo, like I feel like I could have made this beat. Like, if you would have gave me like some time and some pro tools <laughs> or whatever. Um, and it's like some of those songs with those really trash beats are like his best singing slash um, lyric songs. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, man, this song, this beat really tore up this Ooh, song. And I was like, you know what I mean? Um, so like that's that's kind of like the the end all be all. I love it. I feel like if you're not a fan of Rod Wave, this album isn't going to make you one. So he would be third on the list. He is the third album on the wow. list. Um, okay, so I guess we'll go to the second, which I'm predicting is the game. It is the game. And that album is called Born to Rap. But it's like it's split into it carry, two parts. It carries it's twenty tracks. No, nah, that's not it. You're on the oh, wrong wait, wait. album. Oh no 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 no. Twenty five tracks. No, you're on the wrong album, bro. No, nah, it's twenty. It says twenty five tracks. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. And so, but they're all like four and a half minutes plus a ten minute uh-uh. diss song of Eminem. No, the album is called Dramatic Heart versus the Mind. Uh, that's the album. Show you how much this I album to the game. has twenty nine songs and is one hour and fifty one minutes long. And boy, do you feel it. There's a lot of, I'm just like, oh my God. Yeah, this is crazy. Oh my Um, goodness. You can see all the the track listed on it, right? Sheesh. There's not even a time for the World Tour song. What's the World Tour song? It has Nipsey Hussle in it. Oh, there's, it's just like a. You said how many tracks? Because it says 31. 
No, like I'm looking at the Spotify one that I was listening to is 29 songs. Just yeah, this so is, I don't know if there's there's skits in between that they're not counting yeah. the songs. Yeah, um, yeah, this is wild. So like, this <laughs> he's got an interlude called Drink with Braids, <laughs> and it's just Drink talking, and it is bad. it is bad. It's like it is really bad. I was just like, I don't know why Drake agreed to do I mean, this. The braids are bad. <laughs> My bad. Keep. Going. I was gonna say I don't know what you're talking about because like I don't know if you saw DJ Khaled's new song slash video with a uh, Drake and Lil Baby. But Drake got the braids in, and them joints look clean. On to the next. <laughs> <laughs> this album has an insane amount of features on it as well. So, like, obviously, your song Easy is on it, which I completely forgot. But it's like it's the second song on there. So you got one banger on there. I mean, you could call it a banger if you want to, because I hit the skippy, skippy. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh no! I and the thing is, I listened to this album all the way through. Three times, maybe four times, you and like made it a whole day to game. <laughs> that's, that's a whole day. I had to take a drive if to you like eat, go to the bathroom, yeah. drink some a glass of water. That's twenty four hours. I was dedicated. Jeez. Yeah, I and I don't know why I did that. I'm gonna list all these features that he has on here: Ice T, Kanye West, what? Fabio Foreign, Boa QG. No idea who that is. YG, Osby Chill, The Mass, Ty Dolla Sign, Roddy Rich, Jeremiah. Pusha T, Two Chains, Lil Wayne, Dreezy, Kanye see? West, <laughs> Jeremiah so Gett, without features. Twista, there's there's quite a there's very few. French Montana, Tory Lanez, Money Bag Yo, Meek Mill, Blast, ASAP Rocky, Cameron, Big Sean, Blueface, Rick Ross, Nipsey Hussle, Chris Brown, Chloe, Cassie, and he has the ten minute. The Black Slim Shady song, which is his diss to Eminem, where he's doing his Eminem impression mm -hmm. while he's rapping. There is no reason to make anybody have to sit through a hundred, uh, like one hour and 51 minutes worth of game. It was tough to get through this thing. And what's even worse is like he has certain songs where he's trying to do different flows of different people so he has a yeah, song from what i've heard is he's trying to flow like the people who are featuring on the song and it's some of these are real bad like really? one of these one of these songs as soon as i heard it i was like is this a pop smoke song and then like he literally comes out doing the pop smoke i was like this is crazy did this sing, bro is did wild. he sing with chris brown he did he did not <laughs> sing with chris brown um he has a song on here, and it to me, not only is it like, I don't want to say it's the only good song, but it's the only song that I know that I'm going to listen to mm -hmm. again with Pusha T and 2 Chains. And it is so clear how much he is not in the tier of rappers that these two guys are. Mm -hmm. Like, it is like, it's insane. Like, I was like, wow, they really should have, like, like Game shouldn't have been on this song. Like, Jeez. and like, Pusha T goes first, then Game goes, and then like, uh, Two Chains bookends it. Mm -hmm. Two Chains, I feel like he didn't even write his verse down. It sounded like he just went into the booth and spit it, and he ate that yeah. song. Like I was like, oh my god! And like, mind you, this is a song that got Pusha T on it. So is it, and I was like, is Two it Chains worth listening to just for the feature. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Like okay. that. Like to me, if there was, if anybody was like, oh, I was thinking about listening to the new game album, I'd be like, I'll save you the time. Just listen to this song. There's a lot of songs on here where he is. Um, doing like i feel like a 2022 version of certain songs mm -hmm. and i was like wow you should have left these on the cutting room floor wow one of these and i want to get the, i want to say the name because i wanted you to like when i was hearing the song and then i looked over and saw what the name of the song is i was like the game is one of the most cringy adults i've ever met like i was like this is a grown-ass man the song was called hey man i'm gonna have to force feed myself this album chrome slugs and harmony and no, I'm not doing and this and the beginning of the song is like, it's the thuggish I'm not doing it. who's on the song Lil Wayne is on it I'm, and Lil Wayne is bad on it I was like you got a bad Lil Wayne verse I was like Lil Wayne I'm, has it missed in forever I feel like oh my goodness like it was what you got I was like oh my god like it is bad um he has uh, this is the one where like I started to get like mad I was like all right all right game you're doing like way too much mm -hmm. he has a song with Ty Dolla Signs. It's like, all right, you got an R&B guy. Okay. Ty Dolla Signs. Okay. He's going to remake a, two th a song from the 2000s. Okay. And if I told you this song was from The Rock, you know, Jay-Z and all of them, and it was like, you're going to have an R&B singer on it. And it's like, I was like, you're going to remake a song. 
But at any point in time, do you think that song was gonna be change the game like we supposed change the game? I'm not doing Se- it, man. Seagull in the house. I'm not you know? doing it, man. He's, not, oh my I god! I was like, yo, it, even man. Ty Dollar could have sing I, I this refuse, song. I refuse, man. I refuse. I can't do. It. I'm gonna take your word for it, bro. I'm not even gonna I'm lie to you, or like I was 100 percent lying to you. This was definitely the worst album. Rod Wave's album is definitely better. <laughs> I was just saying the whole time oh, because I wanted to save. I wanted you to feel how bad oh, the album was. Oh man, that joint took some of my energy away. Bro. If that he would have chopped, crazy. if he would have chopped this down to like eleven songs, I feel like this would have been a pretty decent album. Yeah, but then they would have had four features on every track. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> Honest, honestly, like there was a lot of guys on here where it's like. Um, like, I don't check for them a lot, but it's like when I hear them, I don't mind them. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I like them way better because I was like, thank you for saving this game song. Ugh. And one of those people was Moneybag Yo. Like, I like oh, Moneybag Money Yo, yeah, yeah. but it's like, I don't listen to Moneybag Yo music. Mm-hmm. He's on a certain song. And I was like, thank God Moneybag Yo was on the song because like, this song could have been right to the recycle bin. Mm. Like, so it's, like, it's like a lot of mm. these are just, I want you to listen to this mm. album just so you can hear the songs that he chose to redo. Mm-hmm. And you could be like, oh, like, why would you do this? Right. Like, who's the... Who are these people in the studio that are tell are are excuse me not giving you the guidance to be like maybe you shouldn't do this song or like maybe you shouldn't do that like everybody's just like no go ahead like I feel like he funded this whole album like himself and was just like had nothing but yes men in the studio with him. That's crazy. That's what it felt like. That's crazy. So that's that's the game's album. Dramatic. The heart versus the mind. Um, Apparently, numbers wise, it's doing pretty decent. I think, but I think it's because like your your streams are by how long it is. I don't know because like yo, the two hours is crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm all set. I might have to take your word for it. All right, well, we got one more, which is uh, your homie Meg ah. Tramazine, which carries eighteen tracks. Yeah, I think the longest one is about four minutes. So this album probably you could probably get through it in what an hour. Something like that, yeah. All right. And you know what? I could have used two more hours. This album is fire, bro. Like, this album is fuego. All right, so I'll, you I'll, save, you, I'll save you some of the features. So we got Key Glock. Yep. We got Lotto. That's one of my favorite ones. We on got Pooh Shiesty on here. He was awful. Bro. You got, <laughs> he was, he was, I was like, wow, this is what Pooh Shiesty sounds like? I was like, this is bad. You got uh, Rico Nasty. Mm-hmm. Janae Eichel. That sounds interesting. That song was fantastic. And it's uh, like, it's the most inappropriate song for a man to sing. And I was like, I'm loving this one. <laughs> you got Lucky it's Day. Co- it's about dick consistency. Yeah, oh, my goodness. You got Lucky Day. Fire song. You got Future. And then you got hey. Sauce Waka, Lil Kiki. And Big Poke, it looks like. Yeah, Big Pokey. Yeah, Big Pokey. You know, a lot of down south Houston legends. That's who a lot yeah, of those yeah, guys are. Yeah, I'm a, and then you got Dua Lipa. Did I say that right? Yeah. There you go. Those are your features. Apparently, that's the most streamed song from the album. And I think that's specifically because Dua Lipa's on there. And uh-huh. like she has like this cachet with like her fans or whatever. Uh-huh. There's at least six songs that I put hearts on. I was like, oh, I'm coming back to this. And like, really? I showed them, I showed them to my friends. Like, I was like, yo, I know you probably don't bang with Meg's stuff. Can I play a couple tracks for you? And they were like, yo, this shit kind of goes. And I was like, yo, this Meg album is bumping, but I was like, got me popping my bussy on this track. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I was a stallion there. Let me tell you. <laughs> like, you're like, you're just I can't say pussy. It's not even the best. You still <laughs> you want to say it. I just don't know what that is. And please do not explain yeah, it. Yeah, take a guess. <laughs> so, no, it's a fusion no, between two no, other no, words. No, take, a, no, take a guess. No, I'm not going to. Please continue to talk about the <laughs> Um, There's a couple. Like, she does, like, uh, like she has a few features on here. <laughs> but, like, the complete opposite of what I had to say about Rod Waves stuff on here. Like, I was like, yo, she got all the dope producers mm-hmm. on here. And it was like, everybody was given like her A1 beats. And it was like, she was going off. And it's like, she has like, and this is what I like about certain people is like, when you give different tastes of different stuff, mm-hmm. like she has the stuff of her trying to do like melodies and singing, like what she does with the Janae Aiko song. Okay. She has the song on there. I think it's called not nice. And it's like, kind of like her talking about being tired of, um, pretending to be nice about people who say crazy things to her or whatever and it's like mm-hmm. I because I'm a lady I got it so like she's talking her stuff on that mm-hmm. then she has like a couple songs where it's just like I was like yo I know these girls are getting hashtag crazy on here because like a lot of these songs are very much like I'm the shit type of songs okay. and it's like she does that better than like a lot of other people out there and I was like yo, I was listening to I was like oh my god and then like obviously she's got like her twerk music and stuff like that um her uh, so you know I got one question is there a Tory Lane song? 
there is a who shot you. No, no. And she, sa- and she starts off this song was like, up. yeah. Yeah, keep D- going. Don't say who shot you on here. Where is, where is it? I think it's the one with Pusha T. Or it says who me? Who me? I think I think that's who it is. It's it's like uh, it's but it says the who shot you beat. Mm-hmm. And like when she starts off the song, she says they talking about who shot me, nigga. You know who shot me, bitch. Cause like then she's going. What? And I was like, follow me, follow me, take it up, <laughs> follow me, follow me. Not your like, wrist turned in. Not your wrist turned in. I was a bad little bitch. Yo, Listen, yo, this album, yo, let me tell you. Let your, me tell you. Yo, not your wrist mm. turned in. <laughs> yo, my pretty thought, white toes. I actually thought of the little the little Spanish girl that be having a wig on in the stores. Like I feel like a Puerto Rican in this. Uh, thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, yo, nothing. The wrist, not yeah. the wrist. Because like the thing is, like, I feel like uh, a lot of female artists, like, they're put out there like as gimmicks. Like, mm-hmm. obviously, we know like the rhapsodies and the dreezies, like those are like the super lyrical stuff like that. But like, they don't get put on a lot of stuff. And mm-hmm. then like, you know, Cardi and her, like, I feel like there's a lot of substance that actually goes on to what they're saying. And like, yo, Meg's flow is fire. Mm-hmm. And it's like she's really dropping bars. Like, I was like, yo, like, I'm listening to what she's saying. I'm like, yo, she's going off. Like, it's mm-hmm. not just, I'm not. Uh, I'm not riding the beat. I'm skating on the beat, and it was like that's what I like to hear. And it was like she went off on like a couple of tracks, but like my favorite. Do you still have a track listed up? Um, I do. Cause I was like my favorite song. Like I must have listened to that joint like twelve times. Which one is? It's like it's song number four or five. Let me see. It is budget with Lotto. No, it's gift and the curse. Okay. But yo, that budget with Big Lotto. No feature. No feature. It was just I was the whole time. No feature. You know what I do too is like I don't know about you, but like when I listen to so, when I listen to certain songs, I'm like, yo, you know who would have skated on this? And I think about stuff like that. Uh-huh. That gift and the curse song. I'm glad that she did it by herself. But I was like, boy, oh boy, if Twenty One Savage was on this song, it would have been a way better. Like it would have been like this would be all over the radio, all over everywhere. I was like, this has like a uh, a. 21 Savage, Moneybag Yo, Big Sean type of feel to it. Whereas, like, if one of these guys are on it, like, I feel like, but I was just like, nah, this song, this song slaps regardless of the fact. I played that joint. There, there was, you know how when certain songs come on, you'd be like, I gotta run that back real quick before I go to the next song. I did that, like, to that one. I'm gonna go from fun to punishment then. I'm gonna start with Meg and work my way back to Because <laughs> I'm not about to do it, man. I need a, quick, you, like, I need a quick turnaround. <laughs> like, it's kind of like my man G Head over at Custom Merch, which you can find at IG and Etsy. You go over there and you type in Custom Merch, you find it, hit that promo code with Heavyweight Bro Stock, HW, the number 8 B R O S to save you. 10% off your order because the more you spend the more you save and do yourself and save some time and skip over that game album and bump that Meg it is in my top 10 albums of the year so far like I can't tell you how far it is I mean, that ain't hard because I don't want to give up my you'd be surprised like with some of these you gotta remember we got Cole Corday, Kendrick mm-hmm. Joey Badass like um there's a bunch of other people that dropped too I just yeah. don't feel like it's hard Beyonce, to make top 10. You say top Beyonce, five, Brent Fiennes, like there's a lot. There's you a lot. You say of top stuff. five, it makes it Drake? tough. That top ten. You say top five, to <laughs> make it tough. That top ten is really like. There was a there was a point where I looked at the top five and I was like, could Meg be in here? Uh, but, but like I said before, like when I'm listening to your album and it's like I'm not like a fan or I don't really listen to you, I'm looking for me to have a reason to listen to yourself. I listened right, to this right. and I was like, let me check out these other Meg tapes. Like okay. that's how that's how good it was. Like okay. I was like, yo. This show is fire. And like, I'm kind of surprised with how big the turnout was for like this Beyonce album. Where were y'all at for Meg's album? Like, how come like y'all didn't show up in the same type of numbers? Like, you know what I mean? Cause like, I feel like the quality is, is there? I'm just saying. I'm, I'm gonna listen to it. I got you tonight. For sure, for sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Huh? You, ain't, you ain't going to sleep. You might as well put the game on if you want to watch it. If you want to go to sleep at oh, work. Man, listen. <laughs> I can't do it, man. I can't do it. All right. You ready to mosey on on? Yeah, what we got next? Uh, Insomnia Hour. Wake me up inside. Wake me up. Wake me up inside. Save me. Save me from the nothingness inside. I love it when it gets after it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shows. This might be a record. How do you want to try to breeze through this then? Um, It's not going to be hard. Because I know some of them is yours, some of them is mine. All right, how many of them are finished? I know I got one of them that's actually done, and this couple of them are premieres. Do you want to start with that? No, I think we should end with the one that actually all right, ended. So, all right, so this is how we do. Well, I'll say that uh, start with the Cobra Kai trailer. Did you watch it? I did not. I the tried Cobra to not. The Cobra Kai trailer came out. 
and it seems like and we don't have to stay on it long but it seems like they're keeping with that uh that uh scheme they got going on of introducing an old character every season so you know the character that's coming into this season is um old boy from okinawa okay his name the one he had to fight to the death yeah and he was just i thought he was cool with him i thought he was training daniel's son he's coming to help Miyagi Dio, Do Karate yeah. against Crease in them. Yeah, because like I thought that's how it was at the end of the season. Like he should chosen. That's his name, right? Chosen. Yes. I feel like he yeah, showed so up. At chosen the end is of coming it. to team up with Danny and Johnny to go against Crease. Okay. And Silver. Okay. Yeah. Well, I I, I love I like that. That was one of my favorite bad guys. And, Terry Silver and, or, or no, Chosen? No, no, chosen. chosen. It's not the best Karate Kid movie, but he is no. a pretty good bad yeah, guy. Man. He's when not man, Johnny Lawrence. Listen, when that man was knocking off all them little balloons to get to coming in, everybody's all quiet. So all you behind you. <laughs> Why are you so good at doing crowd '90s movie characters? Like man popped up and was like <laughs> the, the bridge. <laughs> Rid of it. <laughs> yo, he threw shorty headed to the rock. I was like, yo, that's yo, he, was, yeah, he was wild. Yo, was she really tried wild. to snuff him. He knocked her out and kept like, yo, this man chosen is tripping, man. Yeah, that's, was that's what everybody wanted to have with them little, oh, yeah. them little beat button jokes. <laughs> but yeah, so, all right, we digress. I apologize. Yeah. I just, I'm a really big Karate Kid fan. But, um, <laughs> it, dum, 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 yeah, dum, 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 so dum, dum, it looks pretty dope because, um, they are like going with like the good kids that became bad kids, bad kids that became good kids, and seeing how it all unravels to see if anybody's gonna turn code again. Um, they have added some new characters and they have really sunk into like the TV show. I think it's gonna be uh, you no know, something pretty good to watch. I always watch it with the boys, and we always. Oh, enjoy I, it. I feel like Cobra Kai for like the past three seasons has been like must see TV yeah. to me. I think one thing that I am starting to believe that it's like one of them little rumors that have been flying out there that like Danielson might have been the bully the whole time. Yes, <laughs> bro, like he sucks. Been, he yo. might have been he might have been the bad guy the whole time. And came over here and ruined Johnny Lawrence's <laughs> life. <laughs> Yo, Johnny Lawrence was a man. Had the Michael Jackson jacket, had the dirt bike. He's a, he's like the nerd you don't feel bad for. Where it's like, oh, that's why everybody treats you like crap. Yeah, man, it's like, you suck, dude. It's just like, you know how they say it's like, you know, your kids will dictate the type of person you are and how you have raised them once they leave the house. Yeah. This brother's kids be wilding, man. <laughs> His kids be wilding, man. I was like, that's you, LaRusso. <laughs> like, that that sucks, you. bro. That sucks. is you. So, the whole um, LaRusso family, like, by the and by the time you get to them, you're like, yo, like, I, I hope all y'all get your ass moved. I'm, yeah, all, I'm yeah, so pro Johnny Lawrence. Yeah, it's not even funny. Yo, listen, it's, it's hilarious. So, I mean, shout out to Johnny, man. If, if Daniel ruined your life, man. Eagle Fang. <laughs> right? <laughs> Eagle Fang. All right. So, um, I did start a new TV, a couple new TV shows. So, I guess we could segue to Did those. you finish them or did you just start them? Um, one is only six episodes in, okay, and the other one is um a season and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll start with the season and a half, and that's uh Reservation Dogs. I heard good things. Um, so I feel if I had to make a comparison to try to give you something or some kind of idea of what you're going to be watching, it's kind of like um a Native American version of On My Block. Okay, okay, you know, that's I, like it's. That's a good recommendation, but at the same time, it was like the way all my block finished. I was like, so, man, I left the bad taste in my mouth. The only the, the it kind of leads me to not want to watch Reservation Dogs because if it ends the way all my block did, I'm gonna want all that time back, and I can't <laughs> get it back. But so far, the show is entertaining. Um, I thought on my block was entertaining until it got to the terrible finale in that last season. It was just like, what happened here? Like, yeah. what what are we doing? Like, how did this? show turn into goosebumps or something like that like what, <laughs> what are we doing right now right so um but it's basically um like a native american community um you know i'm big on like being able to learn other cultures and how much you make sure to put that into the tv show so they do do a lot of that with the native american heritage um it's basically two groups of kids that don't like each other and one of them ends up naming themselves the reservation dogs because they live on a reservation. They, they're dogs. Um, they, they're they going at the other two young groups and like their calamities become the show. And, okay. and it, it's, it's a pretty cool show. And I can see like, like on, on, on my block, you don't really see a lot of those situations happen in the kids. <laughs> like, no, really. it's, it's like one of those random situations, but in the reservation dogs, you can like see like, oh, this is stuff that could really be happening to kids. So, so like I know that because the, the second season's out now, right? That's yeah, why it's, that's what's come back up. 
maybe eight episodes. It might be almost done. So, like, I had gotten confused with this and another new show because it's on Hulu, right? I believe so. Yes, it is on Hulu. And uh, another show that came out is the show This Fool. Oh, I never heard of it. Like, I've seen the trailer. Mm-hmm. And I was very much like, this seems like a show that I'm going to have to get into at some point in time. Mm-hmm. And But like, it's like the same thing, but it seems like a Mexican version. But it's like older, it's like a middle-aged Mexican men mm-hmm. that used to be like gangbangers. And it's like they're trying to like be cool again type of deal. Oh, no, nah, that sounds like some Cheech and Chong type. But it's like, it's like I've seen some TikTok clips and stuff like that. I'm like, I think I need to get into it because there's some a lot of funny dialogue mm-hmm. and stuff like that that's in there. And like I thought when you put Reservation Dogs on it that that's what it was. Mm-hmm. And now that I know that it's not, and like as I was going, I was like, damn, what was the name of that show then? It's mm-hmm. like this fool. I think you should check it out. I think okay. it's right up your alley. I'll check it out. I know. All right. So Reservation Dogs is it a must watch? If you need something to fill time, that's what I would say. I so it's call on the it queue. A, I wouldn't call it a must watch. So it yes. goes on to the queue. Um, Flatbush Misdemeanors is coming to the end of second season. Okay. Um, it wasn't on the docket, but I forgot that I didn't put it on there. So I'm just going to get to it. Um, Weebay's impeccable, man. Okay. All right. Like, he's, he's, Is this a must watch now? Yes. Or is it something good? It's a must watch. And what is it on? That's a good question because, you know, I'm watching it on my little, oh, my little, man. My little I'll look, app. Keep talking. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> my little okay. app. But um, so as I explained before, it's two friends, black kid, white kid. They grew up together. And they split apart, and now they're back together, and they go through the calamities of, like, mm-hmm. um, the white friend has, like, um, an addiction to, like, amphetamines or, like, painkillers and stuff like that. Um, the black dude's a struggling artist, and through all that, he's delivering food, knocks over some lean that was in Weebay's house, and now everything that he's involved in, Weebay has something to do with it. I, that's not his name in the show, but I know when it's I say Weebay, people Don't know nobody know that Aaron's name. He's Weebay, bro. Right. And that's how good he was right. as that character. So from the start of that first calamity, he's just, like, always involved in their lives. And he has a niece that he's raising for his brother that's locked up. And that niece is the student of the white friend. So it's like, yo, listen, man, this is what's going on. My niece going to get good grades. All this type of extra stuff is going on in the show. And it's like the way he keeps introducing himself into their situations. It's just it's so random, but yeah. it's so hilarious. Like at one point, the black dude's like at an art academy trying to win like this scholarship fellowship type thing. And this man just pops up like, yeah, I'm all about the arts. <laughs> so that's what made me interested in watching the show because I had seen this clip on Instagram where they were like, we should do like a Black Lives Matter mural. And he was like, hey, I'm just going to let you know the kid's going to skateboard and bike on that thing. By the time you're done with it, it's going to say Black Lives Matter. And I was just <laughs> like, yo, what, is, what show is this? I found out Weebay was in it. I was like, you know what? I'm here for it. Um, they got a guy who plays the stepdad. I think I sent you the clip you of that first interaction. He's like that the entire show. <laughs> his 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 cadence, tone, everything is just like that throughout the whole show, and it's hilarious to me. So, um, I would call it a must watch because it's it's, it's fresh, it's entertaining, um, and I like shows that aren't like other shows. And it's kind of it. I the way say you just put that does. pattern on that phone is crazy. Oh, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at with it. Right, um, so that's it for Flatbush For those who want to watch Flatbush Misdemeanors, it's mm-hmm. apparently a Showtime show, but it's on Pluto TV for free. Okay. So, like, there you go for there. It's also, like, on Hulu if you have, like, a certain uh, subscription, apparently. It ain't on that Voodoo? It is not. It's on Sling. Mm-hmm. It's on everything if you have a premium subscription. I'm assuming that this is the Showtime subscription. Oh, That's what okay. it sounds like. Okay. Pluto TV is the only one that just has it strictly for free because Pluto TV is free. Got you. Okay. So. Okay. Um, the next one is, and you can help me with the second word, is rap. Shit. Good job. Oh, my God. I was, like, I was confused. I was like, I don't know. I was like, I hope it's not a Spanish word. He thinks I'm about to do. Um, I am enjoying this show. I've only watched the first two episodes. As, as you, you will come to enjoy it as well. I very much enjoy it. Like, yes. it's def- as soon as I watched the first episode, I was like, yeah. I'm yeah, here. definitely. Issa Rae got me again. She, 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 she so it again. I was wondering, is this an Issa Rae show? Because I know she Issa was Rae coming show. out with another show, and I wasn't sure if this one was it or not. So, yes, it is an Issa Rae show. It's also on HBO Max. It's on HBO Max, and the premise of the show is um, a young lady who is a struggling artist. So she had, like, this music video that went viral. Everybody thought she was going to make it. She did, and she ends up working in a hotel, and um, she tries to get back into the rap game, and her and her friend are doing that together, and the trials and tribulations of trying to make that happen is what makes the show. There's only six episodes out say, so far? I want to say six. Is that the whole the seventh might have seventh episode might have just came out, but that might have been a sixth episode that just came out. Okay. I think it was a sixth I think episode. when I was getting ready to watch it, there was already six episodes, and that was like a couple of days ago. Yeah, so that that was a sixth episode. Um, it's entertaining. I, I haven't seen anybody in the show 
whose face like pops or is super familiar. And I love the idea. The, your boy from what you call it? That was in that uh, emergency movie. He plays like the producer. He's like the girl's baby daddy. Oh yeah, he's the only familiar person. I don't know his name. He's the only familiar person. Um, he was also in uh, the cowboy movie with Idris Elba. Well, the harder, harder they fall. The harder they fall. Mm-hmm. And wasn't he in another one where they was in Baltimore? Concrete Cowboys. He was in that too. I believe he was. Why is he in all these Cowboys, Cowboys movies? I don't know. But, but he's a solid. He's dude. definitely the sharpshooter and the harder they fall. So yeah. that's a that's a people will probably remember him from that. If anything, he's a, he's the type of face. Every time I see him, I'm like, oh yeah, this could be a good movie. Yeah, I like yeah, it. definitely. And he he does a good job. He's really showing his range. I love when actors can do that. Um, but everybody else is basically new faces for me. Yeah, I don't know anybody else yeah, like, in and this cast. They are doing very well. I don't know how Issa Rae came up with this cast. It's like people she already knew or people she was trying to you know give headway into her career. Same thing with Insecure, but she, man. But she she made a good choice or had made good choices. Um, the friend of the rapper who's um, the girl, the her friend with the little girl. Yeah, she's like an IG model. Yes, yes, yeah. she's doing su- stupendous because she has moments where she's like um, Instagramming, and then she's like super excited, then she's super ratchet, but then she's super sad. Like that's a lot to put. Yeah, she into. does. Look she goes up and down. Like, right, like, and that's like, a, a lot, lot to range. put into one character in one show instead of it being different. Like that, that shows a lot. And I think she's doing a great job with, with her part as well. So I'm, I'm sold on this one. I would call this one a much watch as well. As much as you are enjoying the show, does it make you want to watch insecure? Not yet. Okay. Cause like I do, I, I like it as well. And you like, got to do for me what I do for you. Just that? send me a clip of, of the show right quick that you think would grasp my attention enough to be like, you know what? I want to watch. This. Do you do that to me? Yes. You've done that like one time, but all right. But we can keep up. We can keep up. That means I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do what I do for you. The one um, time of a, show, of a show that I was already going to watch. The new season of Kanan has started. <laughs> okay. And it's already it's already gotten rocking. Uh, it's, it, oh, so it's good uh, off the jump. Oh, yeah. I told you this was one of my, out of all of the, the shows, this one, this one. Do you want to try to go through the power universe again? About, like, what's this what? one is better than Tommy. It's better than Tariq. <laughs> I just love I love black people so much. Like, you know, like I just love I just love that like shows are never what they're called. Like when people talk about like yo play that genuine song, my whole life has changed. That is not the name of that song. The song is differences, but everybody was like that's what that is. The the, the new the new Game of Thrones House of the Dragons. Everybody like the the Dragon House. The dragon. The you dragon watch the new joint. dragons. The new dragon you watch the joint. dragons. The new dragon joint. You watch the Dragon Thrones. The I'm like oh my god. I'm like yo the Game House of Thrones the joint with just the dragons. <laughs> yeah. But it's like you watching Tommy, you watch this. It's like, right. it's like, yeah, hey, y'all don't give a <laughs> yeah, man. This is the best. I, it's, it's strongly competing with the original ghosts. If, power. if you're power, <laughs> <laughs> good mood. <laughs> ah, don't worry. Sorry, Jess. <laughs> you should have made the stallion. Ah. <laughs> That's but yeah, I, 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 I'm enjoying it. Man. It's only one episode so far, two. Okay. Two episodes. Um, again, there's a lot of new actors in this in this series. At least I haven't seen them anywhere else to where they're super familiar. I could be wrong about I that. I can't tell you. I don't watch um, none of them. The only one in there that is familiar is um, the guy who plays Kan one of Kanan's uncle. He is. Have you ever watched? Um, <laughs> this is crazy. I know this is crazy. If you don't know his name, just say you don't know his name and keep it moving. I don't. But have you ever watched Ballers? Yeah. Like the rock joint. Yeah. All right. Remember the lineman who had the cousin that was always with him trying to pitch all the ideas? The super annoying one? No, nah, you're not ringing the bell. Not the big one that was in. Uh, the like the super the big movies? one who yeah. became a gamer. Yeah. But he had his cousin that was always like, you should do this and you should do that. I don't remember. And he was that. like, don't sign that contract. I don't think I got that far in ballers. Yeah, like, yeah, but there was a there was there was definitely a point where like I was watching it like crazy, and then it was just like one day I never watched it, and I just never picked. Yeah, it he was the cousin that was always mooching off of every uh, off of his cousin that was in the NFL. Okay, so but he's he's in it. Um, but other than that, I don't know anybody else that's really in there. But like I said, the show out of it goes Ghost and then Kanan. It's power. Power and then Canaan, Book of Canaan, or whatever it's called. Uh, um, Raising Canaan, that's of, what it's called. Out of all the, out of all these <laughs> other shows that you named, is this the most most watch? Must watch? No, 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 no. I will go with the rap joint. Oh, rap shit. Yep. I will go you can with call it. rap stuff if you want. Yep. I call. I'll go rap stuff. I'll go Flatbush Misdemeanors, and I'll go Canaan and then Reservation Dogs. Okay. 
right, that's yeah. what this is. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is the type of ranking that I like to see. Yeah, I, like, I need people to I, know when they're when they're building their queue. How does it go? And Raising Canyons on stars. Yes. Which uh, I don't know what's happening there. Maybe it was just already a contract thing, and maybe yeah. it's just got to play out this season. But I was just saying that if you wanted to watch it, it's like awesome. Stars is one of those things where it's like it, it's added on to whatever you have. So right. if it's on Sling, right. Amazon Prime, Comcast. Hulu, like whatever it is, <laughs> right. it's like it's a Stars show. So. Right. So yeah, I'm trying to make sure that I'm I'm holding it down in this section, man. A couple of people have been like, like, yo, your man Joey got it locked down on the movies, man. You got to get it together with They're the TV line. stuff. So I'm just like, all right, cool, I got you. I'm about to. Step it up. All right. All right. That's, that's, um, that's four style shows so far. Keep going. So, the last and final episode has finally come out. A better call Saul, right? Yes. And I've heard a lot of good things. And they put a play on words, and the, the last episode is titled Saw Gone. <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, I don't want to ruin it for you because I know this is a show that you're watching. Mm-hmm. I'm but, trying to catch up. Trying. But what I will say is that. Saul proves to be the weasel you think he is, only to turn it around and be like, man, he's really not that much of a weasel. But he is, but he ain't. He's just like, if all y'all was weasels and I didn't like y'all, there's one little weasel that I was like, you know what, you could rock with, you could rock with us. <laughs> but like, um, a lot of people, so like, there's been a lot of rhetoric yeah. that Better Call Saul is officially better than Breaking Bad. Are you on that train? No. Okay. I, I just never, want to. I would never be on that I train. Just, I just wanted to know. I, I feel never. like it. I feel like it needed to be put out I there. Never be on. It was definitely better than that whack Jesse spinoff or whatever that El, El Camino. Or whatever yeah, I don't even know why you gave it that Clint Eastwood name. Like, was it like a? It was a movie though, right? There wasn't a TV show. It was a movie. Yes, I didn't watch it, so like I don't know. It was not good. Okay, save your time. That is the game of this. Of the, all of this. Um, but there was something that hinted that there may be more spinoffs. Okay, because uh, the character who plays Jesse says that he doesn't think that he's going to show up in any more spinoffs. Okay. So in order to say you're not going to show Aaron, up anymore, Aaron, it's Aaron something. I almost said Aaron Judge. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you're Aaron true. Paul. Aaron there Paul. You go. So in order for you to say that you're not going to show up in something, it has to be some kind of inclination that there are going something. to be more. Yeah. So I don't know which character they would go with. I'm assuming it would have to be like the least. Because like I would never think that it, they were going to go with Saul. And it ended up being worth it. Is, so it, like, is it a Kim Wex- Wexler spinoff? I cannot. I cannot. That would be so boring. That would be so boring. It's just because her character is only entertaining paired with Saul. Okay. I'm not going to lie. From what I watched, like I've always enjoyed her character. Like Just period. Like, I think she's... Paired with Saul. Okay. If you take out a lot of Saul and you're like, we're going to have 24 episodes. You're going to see Saul twice. I'm going to be like, I'm not going to watch these episodes. I said the same thing about Saul, though. Like when Saul was okay. on Breaking Bad, I was like, yo, okay. like, you're right. He's only good, like, because he's bouncing off of you're Walter right. and, like, you know, da 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 da. But then it's right. like, I mean, technically, he, like, if, it's, if the writing is strong enough I just feel like and the supporting cast they, is good enough. They're so weird. They mess around and do, like, a Maurice spinoff. Who the hell is Maurice? Hank's wife. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, she was a klepto going around stealing yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Like, you, you never know what it could be. It, they might do, they might do uh, 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 the son. I forget his name. He so had the nickname. One, was, wasn't he uh, Frank Jr.? Or Walter Jr.? He was Walter Jr., but he uh, he changed his name in the show. I forget what it was. I don't remember. It's, damn, how long has it been since it's Breaking been, Bad, it's bro? It's been a while. It's, it's been, been at least, has it been a decade? It could be. It could be. It damn. Could be. It could be, but hey. yeah. So it was, it was definitely well worth it, worth the watch. Um, they did not, they did not save any ink on the finale, and I like the way, the way they wrapped it up. It was pretty dope, and um, it's definitely catch up. I want to talk about it when you're all caught. If you were someone, if someone had never watched the show, mm-hmm. and you had these other shows on here, and they were like, should I start Better Call Saul or hit up some of these other shows? To any of these shows, um, would you put above Better Call Saul? I would say, I would say a couple of them only because, in order for you to understand the essence of Saul, you would have to watch Breaking Bad. Okay. So if that person is not coming in and having to have seen Breaking Bad, I'm not even gonna. So let's just say that I am someone who was like, oh, I always like Breaking Bad. I never got, I never thought about the Better Call Saul. Oh yeah, I'm definitely telling you to watch that. That's number one. I'm definitely telling. Okay, you to watch with a bullet. That. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes, definitely. All right. Next, we have two that that are for you. For me, what do yeah, I got? Yeah, you got uh, a finale and you got a premiere. Which one you want first? I actually have two premieres. Oh, okay. so I'm gonna hit the two premieres. Okay. One of them uh, was the Disney Plus show She Hulk: Attorney at Law. I forgot about that. It did. Not to throw you off, I didn't know Groot was gonna be like 
Five oh, how are we not talking about that? Should uh, we talk about I Am Groot real quick? Three minute episodes. Apparently, like, there's going to be more coming too. Like they're going to be more shorts. It's like I did not expect that. Like it was going off. I was like, wait, what's what's going well, let's on? Let's talk about I Am Groot real quick. It's like right, five. Right. I Am Groot, a uh, Disney Plus show. Like five three minute episodes. Yes. So it's like it's five shorts. Um, that pretty much it's just Groot doing like random stuff. Yes. Uh, you have the one where Groot is kind of versing he's a bonsai like, he's tree. He's like uh, adolescent Groot. He's baby Groot. I wouldn't even call him baby. Well, yeah, yeah I guess yeah, so. like the one of them, he literally learns how to walk. Yeah, you're like, right. you're it's right. like baby group. Um, you have the one where he's fighting a bonsai tree. Yep. You have the one where he kind of starts his own civilization. Yep. You have one, the one where he is trying on like the, I don't know if you want to call them flower dresses or like the mm-hmm. flowers he's kind of trying them on or mm-hmm. whatever. You have the one where he has like the bubble double. Mm-hmm. And then you have the one where he's making the picture at the end. Yes. How about this? How about you? Like, what was the best one and what's the worst one? I mean, I enjoyed them all. Did you? Because okay. they're quick and they're easy and they're funny. Did you? I did you? Watch them with did you son. audibly laugh out loud at any of them? Yes, because I was watching them with my son. <laughs> <laughs> he could have laughed at the credits and I would have laughed. <laughs> it, it just watching him enjoy it made me enjoy it. The, is there one that he enjoyed more than the others? Um. And I couldn't really tell. It was even excitement. I think each time he watched the episode, he became more excited just because it was more group. Yeah. But if I had to pick one, it'd probably be the Bubble Double. Yeah, that was pretty good. I think the Bubble Double, the one with the little civilization of the little guys, and then that the one where he's he, making the pictures. I think those are the three best he enjoyed, ones. He's spoiler made. alert. I'm telling you, spoiler alert. Go ahead, That's go. how you do it. Go for it. But when, like, he, when he finished the colony and he goes whistling away, <laughs> <laughs> no, I just loved it. <laughs> Oh, I like legit. That was the one that like I just went. Pop. I, like, I didn't see that coming. I was just like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely it's definitely worth a watch. I mean, you can I think watch it's worth five episodes. If you have kids, and... I think it's a worth a watch. Right. I think if you're if you don't care about the MCU or care about Groot, there's no reason to watch the show. You could be waiting for your doctor's appointment in the lobby and watch. <laughs> spend 15 <laughs> minutes and watch all five episodes and be entertained, and they'll be calling your name. I was very surprised that we got a Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon in there. Like yeah. I was like, whoa, because. Like yeah. Vin Diesel did do his group for every single episode or something like that, and like the only, oh I didn't know that yeah so the okay. only other notable voice actor was Bradley Cooper. I was rocking we got paid for fifteen so much so much for fifteen, 15 minutes so much money for fifteen minutes. My man Dominic Toretto is collecting them fifteen checks. minutes, and he only goes I am good. I am good. It's like I cash my paycheck three minutes at a time. <laughs> And we're back at it. So, <laughs> the other Disney Plus show that came out was She-Hulk Attorney at Law. One episode or two? It was only one episode so far. They come out every Wednesday. Okay. Because I know some of the Disney joints have been released in two episodes. Yeah. And, like, this, they are 35 to 40 minutes. Oh, that's like The first, the first episode light. is only 37 minutes. Is She-Hulk in the first episode? She is. Okay. She's already the She-Hulk in there. Oh, okay, You do okay, get, okay. so, like, the, the way the oh, show is. Oh, you know what that means, though, right? What? You're going to have that one burner episode where you got to go back and how, how it happened. I'm going to tell you, that was in the first episode. Oh, okay. And it was actually, it the way. I thought it was actually very well done. Because, like, my expectations were that for this show was very low. Okay. Like, after the moon night after the what if after we saw the trailer for she hulk i was like this looks like it's gonna be hot garbage yeah i had no plans on watching it just so you know and i'm gonna let you know like after watching i was like this is actually really good like i was like i'm i'm in on this now um so for those who don't know uh she hulk is jennifer walters who is the cousin of bruce banner's incredible hulk she She is a lawyer she in anything else i don't know the actress from anything else like i've seen her she's a comedian Mm-hmm. So like that's the thing is like she like you've probably seen her like on the I was gonna say Comic View Comic View's not even, like a Comedy Central like you've probably seen her once Chocolate or twice Sundays or something like that yeah but it's like um, when you see her you're like ah oh, she looks so familiar but I don't know her name okay and I don't know her name off the rip either um, the CGI definitely sub- like way improved by the time the episode came around like okay like Hulk is like he's a whole person like in this show mm-hmm. like you know what i mean and I it's think like it's dope that the original bruce banner is in there too and they didn't go with like some off-brand hulk no 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 like what you go like this is the mcu man like they're gonna right. make sure like everybody's getting their getting their money right the way that it's supposed to um so like the way that this episode works she is a lawyer mm-hmm. and um apparently people know that she is she hulk 
Mm. Um, so like we get this thing in the beginning where, you know, like she's talking to like her assistant and her assistant's like, you know, talking to, and says something to her about like, you know, if they piss you off enough, you could always just like Hulk out or whatever. And then she does the thing where they turn to the camera and like, but you guys are wondering what's going on right now. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and then like you get like these, uh, these, this scene of like how she became the She-Hulk and it's mm. like, um, it's really about the Hulk, you know, like the being the Hulk is always been such a burden for him. Mm -hmm. Whereas like everything is like all the horrible things that have ever happened in my life happened because like I've been the Hulk. So mm -hmm. like he and like and like naturally like yes he's the Hulk. He's like a lot of people's favorite. He's the strongest. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to be this big scary guy. But like Bruce Banner is a pretty corny dude. Mm -hmm. So like now you have the personalities merged into each other. Mm -hmm. Like you got this Professor Hulk. Like you just got a big goofy like bruce banner like for right. essentially and it's like you know he's like he has a binder of like how to be a hulk and like he's trying to teach her like hey listen like i can't let you out of here until like you've learned to harness right. like your are so a lawyer by day and then hulk camp by night yeah. <laughs> oh my God. type of deal so like uh well no he what you call it like so the moment that she turns into the she hulk mm -hmm. he's like yo you can't leave because like you're not safe to go back there mm -hmm. and like her whole thing is like no nah, bro i'm I'm a lawyer like my like what i do is important like i mm. need like i can't be with you on this island like throwing boulders like into the ocean it's like no i got things to do and it's just like you know like he's not ready for her to go she's very ready to go like she keeps showing how in control of this the she hulk that she is okay um I don't want. I feel like I've gone way too into like what's into this episode or something like that. But I would just say That's that cool. like I do think that like she's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. I think the CGI looks a lot better. I think the comedy for the show for for the most part as it's been works. Mm -hmm. um, there's only been like a couple of uh, like Pratt falls or things like that. But like they have like a lot of like very interesting conversations. Okay. Like you know like one of the big conversations is like she's she thinks that uh, Steve Rogers died a virgin. So it's like they keep having like that. That's like a constant conversation that they keep having. It's like they'll come back and she's like, "You try to tell me he was in the war," and they're like, you know, and like all this other stuff. And it's like it's a it's a running gag. There is a post credit scene for this movie, the uh, this this first episode okay. as well. Um, I don't know how many episodes it's supposed to be. I know most of these Marvel shows have been six episodes. I say if I had to guess, I say six. I think that I've heard it's supposed to be more. Mm -hmm. And like, like I said, like I'm in. I'll be there like on Wednesday. I very much enjoyed Miss Marvel. Mm -hmm. I think this is better than Miss Marvel so far. So like, it's already in the higher than like Hawkeye, Captain America type tier. Like it's mm -hmm. it's up there. I don't think it's entered this uh, Loki WandaVision level yet. But I think that it's while it's different, I think it could it has get there. Potential. Yeah, I think it okay. could get there. Okay. One thing I forgot to ask. Let uh, me add. Uh, better Call Saul last season. They added three episodes. So it's so 13 it episodes? 13. Damn. Yeah. Where can they see Better Call Saul? Is that on Netflix? The the old episodes are on Netflix. The newer shows are on AMC. Okay. Because that's so what like Breaking AMC Bad Plus. was. Yeah, yeah, that's what Breaking Bad was on. Damn, why AMC? Like, why aren't you on something else like a, like a Prime video or something like yeah, that? Right, trying to get the streaming money knowing they only got one show popping. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, for real, for real. 18 tracks. You got one track that's hot. Um, The other show that came out... um just came out on Sunday was the House of Dragons, which mm -hmm. is the Game of Thrones spinoff. Yes. Um, this concerned takes, about this one. I it takes, to you. I was also very, I was, I don't want to say concerned, but I was very much not excited for the show. Right. Like, I was very much like, I think I was Game of Thrones out. I think season eight of Game of Thrones was that bad, mm -hmm. where it was just like, I, I don't care less about seeing these characters ever again type mm -hmm. of deal. Um, after watching the first episode of House of Dragons, I kind of take it all back. Like, I feel like really? I'm back. I feel like I'm back in it. Really? Um, yeah. And it's like, they're taking so new your, characters, right? Brand Smith, like everybody. So the show takes place way into self. the past. Oh, okay. So it's, it's way like young. these, like these are, we're talking about like the people from Game of Thrones. These are their grandparents. So like the Mad King is probably in this. He's not in there yet, but yeah, it's like, be. you know, like that's the thing. Um, but it brings you back to like, what Game of Thrones used to be and like what you used to like about Game of Thrones. So it's a fresh start. It is. And it's like, you know, um it takes it's a very Game of Thrones type story. So like the House Targaryen is the big house that rules over everything back in the day. I mean, special on Targaryen are that's like Daenerys, the pe the people with the white hair. Dragons. Yes. Yes. And that's the, so there's nine dragons in the show. 
and there's a lot of dragons and they all have like very different personalities and like all this stuff like that but like the targaryens they just got they got dragons bro like everybody's got <laughs> dragons so the targaryens kind of rule all of king's landing okay type of deal um the current king of um of winterfell mm-hmm. is he only has daughters mm-hmm. um so because of that they have to have the discussion of when he dies who will inherit the throne mm-hmm. so like he has to make a decision of there's really only two decisions he has his brother mm-hmm. who's who's kind of like the war general mm-hmm. um i'm trying to think of like how to describe him because he's not like a jamie lannister mm-hmm. but he's like um almost like an Oberyn martell the red viper okay my man Mandal- the mandalorian now mm-hmm. where it's just like he is a fantastic fighter um he's but he's very ruthless he's mm-hmm. ruthless and he's um he's very brash he's hot-headed hot-tempered stuff okay. like that okay and then the only Makes other sense. choice is his daughter scar. <laughs> kind of, yeah kind of and then like the only other choice is his daughter mm-hmm. who's very very young um i want to say she's like 12 or something like that mm-hmm. and like there's never been a queen of winterfell so like a lot of people are just like it kind of seems like you have to go with the brother right um his wife is pregnant at this point in time but because it's so early in the times they can't tell if it's going to be a boy or a girl gotcha so like he's very much of the mindset of like well my wife's going to give birth to the son so we don't have to worry about it and they're mm-hmm. like but what if she doesn't right. like and they have to have, have another step. girl right so like i don't want to spoil anything that happens like in this episode don't, but like i'm interested but it was a really really good first episode where like everybody's story had something that i was like oh i like that oh i like that oh i like that i was like i think you might be my favorite character you know what i mean like there's a lot of that stuff going on um and then there's a very very big thing that happens towards the end of the episode where it's like it's such it's such a difficult choice that like a person would have to make and it's like i think that's what game of thrones is all about game of thrones is all about people whether they're good or bad, they have to make a decision. And mm. sometimes your decisions are two bad decisions. And mm. the characters in Game of Thrones, regardless of what happens, regardless of who you are, you always have to live with the choices that you make. Right. And the king in this movie, or the, this episode, makes a really, really crazy decision. And Should I want to see, I want to see, Be I, I want to see, <laughs> where this goes because it's like this is going to this was a very very big decision mm-hmm. and i was like this is going to come back one way or another mm-hmm. how it goes like you know what i mean like there's a lot that takes place into what? it it's all i think the first episode was like an hour and 16 minutes Sheesh. the first like oh. the first like 12 minutes of it like i was kind of just like see man I, 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 I didn't know about the show and as it got into it i was like listen i can't i put i put the phone down and everything i can't lie to you man i'm, I'm like wait spoiled now Cause there's so many good shows that are half an hour. Right? No, <laughs> like, yeah. Yo, I don't need an hour no more, man. Just make the season twenty four episodes. Oh, like, yeah. Give me thirty minutes. There's like four. There's like four animes 30. that are just like this. Right. Like bang give me, out give me night. thirty, right? Quick, man. I'm all set. Man. I think I think House of Dragons is worth the watch, and yeah. I think especially right. if you are a fan. Or if you were a fan of Game of Thrones, especially like when it was in its heyday, mm-hmm. um, I think that you'll kind of get what you were missing. It's not exactly like right, Game right, of Thrones, right, so I don't right, want to right. tell people that it's like that. But like, if you remember the first couple of seasons of Game of Thrones, like right now, it's very hard to remember who anybody's name is. Mm-hmm. So it's like all I remember people is by like either what you look like or who you are. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that's the daughter. That's the brother. Mm-hmm. That's this person. And then like they have the thing too where it's like, oh, this this is the uh, House Stark. That's mm-hmm. House Targaryen. Mm-hmm. That's House uh, Tully and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, you think about it, it's like, damn, like that's that's this person comes from this. And it's like you kind of see like how certain houses were looked at like at certain times or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, I don't know if you remember sam tarley but it's like their house was always almost a joke mm-hmm. and it's like in this time it's like that mm-hmm. kind of continues sheesh do you remember the movie a knight's tale with heath ledger the joker yes there's a big jousting scene in this episode i know and like the moment that i was oh, watching this new one in the in the in the house of dragon mm-hmm. and there's a the uh as soon as it came up i was like anybody that likes a knight's tale is gonna bang with this specifically because like this did they scene introduced is fire did they introduce their writers like they did in a nice tale? not everybody okay. but there's certain people and everybody fights differently while they're jousting mm-hmm. and it's just like oh okay this bangs hard <laughs> and then i was like oh yeah i was like yeah give it throws you still got it i was like you still got it that's what's up 
That's what's up. I don't know how many seasons we're supposed to get of this. I don't know how far we're getting into it. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard a name of someone that we know. I think the only name that I heard is Aegon Targaryen. But it's like, if I remember, like, Aegon is way back in the day, he was, like, one of the first Targaryens. Like, Rhaegar is, like, the big one. Mm-hmm. Like, he's the one that, like, is Jon Snow's dad and stuff like that. Okay. So, but, like, we never see Aegon Targaryen. I think he's already dead, but it's, like, he's, like, the head of, like, prophecies and stuff like that. Okay. They do bring up the uh, White Walkers, though. Oh. They do. I don't know that. I don't think it's a spoiler because it was only just dropped in a conversation. Oh. Because, like, because, like, they say something, they're like, well, you remember the prophecy from the cold that comes from the north, and we have to prepare. And I was like. Oh. <laughs> oh, snap. That's the House of Dragons. White Walkers. All right, you got uh, one more on here. Damn, finale. there's a lot of shows that we got to go it's through. The finale, last one. The Let's finale go. Finale of P Valley Never on watched. Amazon Prime. You want to talk about a must-watch show? I mother love this show. <laughs> I love the characters in this show. Like I want to be a part of this universe. There's a rapper. <laughs> there's a rapper in here named Lil Marta. That's my guy, and like I legit have downloaded his music on my phone. I'm like, yeah, ah, cook a letter, cook a letter, ah, cook a letter, cook a letter, ah, Wait, cook a letter, pump that, pump that, ah. No, but like he's a, like the songs that they do on the show, like they put mm-hmm. him on there. So like, you watch, I don't want to tell you like what any of his real life stuff because I feel like it'll ruin the show. I think I'm not gonna watch the show. You should watch. Why wouldn't you watch the show? Is it really that good? It's really good, bro. All right. There's and the thing is like the. The main character of the show, I hate that bitch. I can't stand her. <laughs> and apparently, she's not coming back for season three. And I was like, good. <laughs> this is a little murder show, anyways. That's the only reason. Like, I do it. Like, literally, every time that brother's on screen, I'm like, <laughs> this, 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 this man's about to wow me. What, so, you like, to, what you got to say? Whatever is happening, he's definitely about to, you know, stop you. Like, the soundtrack for the weekend had a lot of uh, P Valley soundtrack on it. I'm just letting you know okay. that. Okay. And it's like, they do a great. Do I have to send you a clip of something that happens on the show yes. so you to get it? Yes. <sighs> yes. All right. I, th- I think I got the perfect clip, but it's like, <sighs> it's from season two, though. So, like, it, will, will it, if it's good enough, will it make you? Yeah. All right. I think, Pete, I think this season started off uh, really shaky. Like, I didn't know where it was going because they were dealing with, like, a lot of the pandemic and, like, all that type of stuff in mm-hmm. it. So, like, the story was kind of like... It wasn't really a lot like season one, but then like it really, really picked up. And I thought like the last, I want to say there's 10 episodes in the season. I want to say that the last like six episodes were super strong. Like every, like I was like, I I can't wait on Sunday for when P-Valley comes out so I can watch it. Like that's how good it ended up being. It's a great binge show too. I hear a lot about it. That's what I say. It is really, really good. I think two of the actors that are on the show are so good. Like when we were talking about the Emmys and all that stuff, I was like, I don't know if these guys are nominated, mm-hmm. but they need to be nominated for something because they're just they're that good at what they do on the show. Okay. I think it's well worth the watch. For those who don't know what P Valley's about, it's about this uh this strip club in Chuckalisa, Mississippi called the Pink. And what? Chuckalisa. That's that. Okay. It's a Chuckalisa, Mississippi. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> where all that bad bitches come down to the pink. <laughs> listen, man, listen, man. Like, I lived this life with this show. Like, I was like, how was I not casted on this show? Like, first of all. Um, and it's pretty much like it's, doing this. it's a run, it's 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 a poor town, like in Mississippi, but like where everybody goes to have fun is down at the pink. Mm-hmm. So it's like you kind of get an inside look at what like the lives of like the strippers and like everybody else in there, like what they do and like why they even have to be at the pink in the first place place you know what i mean and it's like a lot of them like have some pretty good stories that go along with it like you Sounds know like players club it is very if you like players club you will love p valley it is players club but tw- but the, 20 the, episodes the elongated version yeah like there's definitely like <laughs> my man uncle clifford <laughs> who's a drag queen is very much Bernie mac like it is so like <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Like that's that's my guy or my girl. My girl, my, my girl, Uncle Clifford is like my second favorite character in the whole entire show. What's happening? Cause like, what you going Like, yo, she's dope. Like every time she comes out, she's like, I know y'all ain't about to start stuff in the pink right now. Cause everybody knows Uncle Clifford's rule forty three ninety team means no bitches. I'm telling you, it's it's perfect, man. It's perfect. I think Bernie Mac would disapprove. <laughs> nah, nah, man. And like, yo, he's, she's got dollar bill written all over. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I think Bernie Mac would have done a guest appearance on the show. There was a guest appearance by. One Meg the Stallion on the oh, show. I she should say Uncle Luke. <laughs> it's right up his alley. I would not be surprised. 
but it's like there's i think there's a lot of great storylines i already told you like my two favorite characters and like i think like whenever whenever they're on screen i'm like i'm very tuned in and it's like to me it's like it's their show now all right I'm i think gonna... you should give it a shot p valley two thumbs up baby this is how many seasons only two seasons the second season just just ended the first season episodes? the first season is only eight episodes the second season's 10 episodes how long are the episodes they're an hour long episodes but i promise you so for so first of all fellas out there <laughs> yeah here let me wait, just uh, wait why'd you get the love ones <laughs> let me just let me just i'm gonna tell you something like there's there's a lot of like melodrama and like all this other stuff in here and like you know for the ladies like you know there's a lot of like stories about you know like the trials and tribulations and i know like we're not really here for that this is a show about chuck alisa strip clubs there is at bare minimum two stripper scenes in every single episode yeah. just to keep you invested yeah you know what i'm saying like there's a there's always there's something for everybody in this show oh let me tell you that i think that this is a big i think this show is a bit of a big hit with the ladies and stuff like that but like, I'm, I'm telling you fellas this is worth your time and they got a little something for you in here too down at the paint you got something for everything for everybody baby stop it he <laughs> valley season two stop it. can't wait for season three stop it don't stop pop that, pop that. <laughs> we got a lot of movies on this docket but boy how long was that an hour long on just the tv yo listen man Wait, we might have to skip heavyweight lovers Time today stamp. yeah we might have to skip heavyweight lovers today i'll do i'll still do it but i'll do it for the next episode all right I think that's gonna have to be the move. All right. Okay. All right. So let me see. Let I mean, see you, what, you gotta get to work, bro. Let me see what me. order this is in. I get there when I get there. I'm working right now. Oh well. For, well, before we talk about anything, one of the things that we need to talk about is last time we were on, mm -hmm. you had a lot of very negative things to say about the movie Prey. That's why I'm going right to it. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm jumping right to it right, right now. Go ahead. And I want to let you know that I watched Prey, and the entire time I was like, "What the hell is Raisin talking about? This is one of the best Predator movies." If it's not, it's got to be top two or three Predator movies that's been out. This movie was fantastic. And it was only an hour and a half. Keep going. I mean, like, I don't know what you want me to say. I was like, I thought the the people, all the actors in it were pretty good. I thought like the, um, like while it's, I don't want to say it's low budget because it's not low budget, but it wasn't a feature film. So like the fact that they had some sort of budgetary restrictions and they kind of like went through that with making the Predator, the Predator invisible for a lot of it. But the parts that he's not, it's all practical effects. Like the Predator looks amazing in it. And then I was like, the girl that's in it, like she's dope. The brother in it is dope. Like the only people that suck are like the other people like in the tribe that are like the jerk boys or whatever. And like even the weird, what are they, French? The French guys? Like that was a, that was weird like at the time, but I understood like why they were there. And I was like the whole time, I was like, yo, this joint is fire. Raisin smoking bass. And everybody that I talked to said the same thing. They were like, I was ready to talk about that movie was dope. You're the only person, bro. What do you got to say? Sometimes you got to stand alone. Why? But like, why? I, what do you? I what's just, the, what's I, the platform that you're standing on? I didn't enjoy it. Like at all? Then, no, I thought the brother was dope. Mm -hmm. I thought the brother was dope, mm -hmm. and I thought he should have been allowed to kill the predator because he was working that man. He was but work. He was working, working that, in that predator. And then the predator, like always, goes out like a sucker and use something that can't nobody else use to try to get out of there before he gets worked. And then you end up dying by one of the weakest characters in the movie, like well, like you do all the time, bro. You got murked. You got murked by Sanaya Lathan, and then you got murked by. OG uh, Danny Glover with one leg. He also got murked by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. He got murked by I AJ told you I, I told you I liked the first one. Yeah, I think first this one is dope. If he bleeds, you can kill it. Like yeah. when, the, when that man got in the mud. When they, when they said that in this movie too, I was kind of like, that was all right. That was, that was dope. And then they had the mud situation where she never really uses the mud. She, she, that's how he dies. Mm -hmm. We're getting into spoiler territory right now just for y'all that want to know so yeah she gets the predator like no she gets his mask yes but like the whole reason why he's in the thing that he's in is because she's using all of the things that she was doing throughout the movie like that's her thing is like i'm not big and i'm not strong but i'm smarter than a lot of you other people because i think about these things like a little bit more through so it's like all yeah. these places that i've been like he's in the same quicksand that i was in before man this man gave work to Baloo's great grandfather <laughs> with no issue, and you gonna lose. <laughs> but like no, so like that's the thing is like there was no breaks for this predator like that. Like he fought the snake, he fought the bear, he fought something else. There was another animal that he fought. It was a wolf. 
A wolf, yeah. He yeah, fought yeah, yeah. he fought a wolf. Then he goes and fights like that and he um all of the people that are in her tribe. Then it fights all the French people with the guns. Then it fights the brother. Then it fights her. Like she's not fighting an apex predator that's fresh off of the thing, because then she would have got bodied. Mm-hmm. And like she knew that, which is why she did certain things a certain way, like didn't give him time to like spray that gel and heal up and like do all this other stuff. And then like took advantage of like him being tired to get him to murk himself. She worked that man. No, she jumped down from the tree to knock him into the mud. And then like after that, like she was kind of just waiting. She was like, go ahead, go ahead. Chopped that man's arm off. Yeah, she did. <laughs> shot that man with his own weapon. He shot himself. Whatever, however you want to look at it, like, like, fam, you don't, you don't know how your gun work now. <laughs> you don't know no, this brother got. Work. You just said he got his arm cut off. The brother done stabbed him through the leg and yeah. was still, and like, what you call it? The I brother. Think, I wish the brother would. So, I'm not so, gonna lie to you. Like the the whole thing. Like I was like, the brother was fire. He was yeah, a fire character. Was and I, I was think, like, I'm mad that he didn't. get I think to the him. one thing I did appreciate about the movie, not to just give it all bad negative reviews, was the fact that we knew like this was like the origin story of the predator this is supposed to be like the first time the predator like hmm, i don't know if it's all of that i think it's just we're just giving you a predator a different time period okay. i hope i mean that, i hope that they a... do they start doing these predator movies the way they do these assassin creed games i want to see the predator versus egyptians i want to see the predator versus some pirates i want to see the predator <laughs> like i'm like yo sign me up like i thought she was super, i thought she was fire but one thing i did respect is that like this is does go like further back in time and i like the fact that even though he was an alien he didn't have like a bunch of modernized stuff. So like mm-hmm. with the new Predator, the like the little gun that he had in the aimer is like literally like, like lasers laser. and yeah. stuff. And he was like shooting like darts or something yeah. like that. And the, the newer Predators have like that metals, titanium, whatever you want to call it, mask. And his look like like bone claw or something yeah. like that. So that I thought that was pretty dope. I didn't I didn't have any issues with the way they made the Predator look. That was dope. I just the movie didn't entertain me, man. Um, entertain? That was like yo. I you know the, you know the Predator was played by a basketball player, right? Like an no, overseas basketball player. Yeah, he's like kids like six eight, six nine. So like he went from playing pro basketball overseas to now he's a predator to playing the predator <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty it. sure he probably went right back to basketball after this and like <laughs> I, I don't know how he hopped off the mud and right. went straight back it's to not, the car it's not like i got a lot of a lot of war- words in this movie yeah, it's like, not like an acting debut i'm just they're using hey, me for tell that to the guy who plays michael myers that brother got mad but money in the bank too dang you know what i'm saying i was just like i was like racist tripping this movie it's hey. very high on my list of movies that I've seen this year. That's all I got to say. Hey, I may listen to these albums and say Game is one and Meg is less. You, you, you could say that. <laughs> you could say that. You said you could be an idiot. <laughs> is Prey better than Thor Love and Thunder? Oh, you're making me choose between terrible and terrible. It's like... This movie's terrible. Like, crazy, crazy. This movie's terrible. No. Like, if someone was like, hey, I'm going to go watch that Predator movie, you'd be like, don't. Right, Don't waste listen, your time. If I had to watch one of them again, I would watch The Prey over Thor. If you were to watch Prey or Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which one are you watching? <laughs> like all bad choices. <laughs> I'm going to watch Prey. If yeah. you're going to watch Prey or The Gray Man, which one are you watching? Gray Man. Okay, I just wanted to know. <laughs> I just wanted to know where it stopped at. Only reason uh, I chose Prey over the other ones is because it's less time of stuff I don't want to watch. <laughs> wait, I thought you liked Gray Man. No, I did. I did like Gray Man. That's oh, why okay. I chose Gray Man. But right. I chose it over them other MCU joints because it's not going to hold me for two and a half hours. You know what I mean? Hour and a half. I'm up out of there. I think you're tripping. I think if this if this movie had come out in theaters, I think it'd be a matinee movie. That'd be my level for it. Okay. I think like I think like maybe it's not worth the full price of admission, but like and I would, you, in my opinion, have the matinee. You do know it was supposed to be a theater release. I don't and know it, why it wasn't though. Why wasn't it? Because they just felt like the numbers weren't going to be there, and that's why they made it a streaming release. Because this is like I think it's literally the number one streamed piece of media that's come out this year. I think. Which is smart because yeah. people are not going to go pay to go see this, but they will watch it at their crib. Right. Yeah. So it was a smart decision. But I do think that enough people watched it where if it if the next one comes out of theaters, that people will go see it. I think people enjoyed it that I'm much. I respectfully disagree. A lot of people have been calling for the girl in this movie to play the female Wolverine um, in the MCU or something like that. They're like, she needs to be in something. That's pretty much what everybody's saying. Like, she was that good. That's dope. Her playing Wolverine in anything does not make the prey better. I'm just letting, I'm just letting you know what people are missing. You know? oh, Come on, man. What's, what's, what's the next movie? We got Day Shift. 
They shipped on Netflix. Netflix. Yes. Jamie Foxx. I remember I told you this was coming out. Yep. Jamie Foxx. I want you to go first because I know what I... Do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? Well, first of all, what the movie's about. Okay, so um, it's a vampire movie. Um, It's called Day Shift because it's like the shift that Jamie Foxx... Like, you literally get paid to murder vampires. They take their teeth and they turn it in for money. And the worst shift to work is the day shift because the vampires only come out at night. And Jamie Foxx is trying to get back into the academy of where you get to kill vampires and get paid premier money rather than having to go to bootleggers and sell these teeth and get getting crumbs why is it important that jamie fox needs this money because he needs to stop his girlfriend from leaving town with his daughter so he needs to get this premier money for the vampires that he's killing and um when he finally does get back in they put him on a day shift where you can't really get paid like that and they give him uh an hr representative played by david franco David Franco, which was in Neighbors. No, not Neighbors. Yeah, no, he was in Neighbors. Was in Neighbors? Yep, yeah, yep. So um, I think Jamie Foxx was great. I think he was great. Um, I think Snoop Dogg was excellent. Um, Megan Good and the few lines that she had did a great job. All the other vampires were all new faces, but um, I, I felt like this. I felt like they were believable, though. Yes. Like I believed that these people did these things in this organization. Yes. The villain of the movie was kind of very generic like she says like very mm-hmm. generic villain mm-hmm. things but for the most part like i thought she was pretty decent yeah and like, I she was like, pretty intimidating and, and stuff and i feel like for me i was like i felt the same way but i only felt like that because there's been so many vampire movies so it's just like you already know what they're going to say and it's just like this is traditional vampire stuff so it's like how much can you really swing it like these lines have to happen in vampire hood but <laughs> Would you rather watch Day Shift or watch Day Prey? Shift. Would you rather watch Day Shift or The Gray Man? Gray Man. Okay, I just want to. I'm, I just want to know where we're at. That's all uh, I'm saying. It's uh, like, that's how high Day Shift uh, is. For you. Okay, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Yes. Um, all of these stunt actors, the they, they seem to all be like contortionists. Mm-hmm. Like these fight scenes were very creative yes, and like very well done. I was very like. So like once the first fight scene happens, I was so just like, oh, snap. oh, I was like, oh, this is we're really going for it. Like with oh, this yeah. movie, because it's like when you first see it and I was just like, yo, Netflix has really been killing it with these movies is like between this great man and hustle. Mm-hmm. I was like, these are some of my favorite movies that have come out this year. Yeah. And it's like, and I thought and this I, movie was very fun. And I got to give credit to the Snoop D O W G. Like usually when he gets into a movie, I'm like, man, there's got to be some bad acting in here somewhere. <laughs> I think this might have been one of the best roles he's played in a long time. Like, yeah, it, took him, like, it was very, very like few and far. They between. give him too much. They sprink, they sprinkle them in really right. well. And it he's t- pretty much just Snoop Dogg. Right. And it took 20 years for him to get good at acting. But <laughs> I think he like, finally figured it out. Story of Jimmy Bones. He didn't like Bones. I didn't do it for him. I didn't like Bones. I didn't like what? How high part two? <laughs> The uh, wash, I, the wash, baby no, boy, baby boy. What's the man? Whoever told you to put on that A shirt was trying to play you, Snoop. You should have never fell for that, man. A punk ass joke. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, I, I I enjoyed it as well. I enjoyed it as well. It was, it was definitely. I'm not gonna lie. Once I finished it, I was like, I know reason love this movie. Mm-hmm. And I was like, he's gonna talk about like how high this movie is. And I was like, I know when we get to the end of the year, and we have to do this, you're gonna, you're very loudly be like, day shift. <laughs> Number four, <laughs> like it very loudly and proudly. It's like it's it's okay. Day shift is it was really hey, good. Listen, y'all can kill me in the comments if you want to, man. But I'm definitely taking day shift over prey. That's why I I honestly I might too. Mm-hmm. Like I just thought, I thought they were both really enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like as soon as day shift was over, I was like, oh. It's really tough really when you have a movie with action and then a movie that gives you action and comedy. Yeah. Because it's, you're hitting two two movie senses. Yeah, and then, like, you know, I feel like we also have been doing the uh, the debate of who's better, Will Smith or Jamie Foxx, and I'm very pro-Will Smith. Who's been doing, we've been doing that debate? A lot of people have been doing that. Debate. I have not. I will not partake in that debate. So why not? Because that's easy. Who is it? Will Smith. All right, just check it, because a lot of people be like, yo, but Ray, though. I'm like, yo, but Will Smith got Ali. Like, why we, why we try to play, like... Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Jamie Foxx has a lot of bad movies in there, but at the same time, I thoroughly you go enjoy iconic it. TV shows, you're choosing Fresh Prince over the Jamie Foxx show. Yeah. If, if you go music, we're not even going to go music. Man, Will Smith like, got a Grammy. Right. Uh, I, don't, Diamond. I don't know what we're, what we're talking about now. Like, you, you even talking about, uh, what, who even knows what Jamie Foxx's first movie was? Is it Booty Call? Was that his first? It's a, it, I'm pretty sure it's Booty Call. 
Wow, was it? I feel like it. No, nah, that that might have been it. I might choose that over Will Smith's first movie then. The Philadelphia? No, not Philadelphia. Yeah, seven um, Degrees of Separation. Seven Separation. Yeah. Um, no, I, I'm just saying. So like, I don't want to say like I have a bad taste of Jamie Foxx, but huh? Everything else is a body bag, though. I feel like that too. Jamie Foxx is dope, though. It's just, I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think. I just think that they're not. Like yeah, like I said, like yeah. you could be two good movies and one movie just be better. So, so right. that's all it is. Like you two different actors, one is just better. But like I was kind of just like, are we getting bad Jamie? Or are we getting good Jamie in this movie? Like there was right. kind of like that piece of it for me. And I'm glad we got good Jamie. I thought the movie was really good. If you haven't seen it, if this was in theaters, I think this is also worth the matinee price. I think it falls like right in between the full price and matinee. I don't think it's bad enough to be a five dollar Tuesday at all. I think it falls right in there, and I think it just hits the matinee price. I'm with it. That's where I'm at. I'm with it. All right. Next, we have the Honor Society. Okay. So I know you watched this. Honor Society was on Hulu. I seen it on the docket. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, you know what? My homie be watching TV shows when I ask him to. So I'm going to watch mm-hmm. a movie that he already has queued up. Said we have a reason to talk to talk about. I got through the first 30 minutes, and then I got a drink of water, and then I took a nap. <laughs> So I literally only started watching this because it has Dustin in it from Stranger Things, and that's the main reason that I watched it too. And he, I, 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 I couldn't do it, man. I couldn't do it. So I couldn't do it. Go ahead. I'm, ahead. Gonna, I'm gonna do because I got watch it. So what the Honor Society is about, mm-hmm. and I really wish I knew this actress's name or what she's in, but I know we've seen her in a ton of stuff. Okay. But I cannot, I cannot put her name and have it like in my head right now. Um, but she plays an honor student. Mm-hmm who is like top four in her class and she really really wants to go to harvard Mm -hmm. and she finds out that the guidance counselor has like an in to send somebody to harvard but he can only really give it to one person Mm -hmm. so she finds out that she's fourth on that list so this movie is about her like systematically trying to take out do you want this real quick because i don't think any of this is going to stand out to you she was the daughter in Nice Guys, in the movie The Nice Guys. She was in The Nice Guys. She was in Senior Year. Oh, she was in Mar of Easttown. Mayor of Easttown. No, no. Mar of Easttown. No, that's, that's pronounced Mayor. Oh, it's Mayor? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Spider-Man? No Way Home? Yes, she plays Betty Brant from the, Spider- the newer Spider-Man movies. There's also Spider-Man Far From Home. Um, I don't think you're gonna know any. But I think I think the Betty Brant character is the thing she'd most be known for. Or I thought the Night Spies was really good. Spider Man's. Yeah, she has like her own episode of Black Mirror, I think too. Definitely has her own episode of Black Mirror. That's what I mean. She's one of those faces that you're like, almost like the Leonardo DiCaprio meme, where you're like, ah, that's the girl from ah, but you can never really pinpoint her. Right. But I think she's most known for the playing Betty Brant and the Spider Man movies. So who was the newscaster? Which in Spider Man Far From Home, she dates Ned for like a little bit and stuff like that. Like that's kind of who mm. she is. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. But like, it's her plan to systematically take out the three people that are above her. Um, so that way she can get that spot into Harvard. So they have midterms that I think that are coming up. So like she's trying to slip up these uh, three other kids. One of them is uh, a young girl who's kind of like a shut in and like, you know, she I don't even want to say like what she does to get them out of there. But like the number one kid in the class is Dustin from Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. And like she tries a bunch of different things to kind of like knock him off his game, but she can't knock him off his game. Um, if I'm being a hundred percent honest, the this movie is I think an hour and forty minutes long. Okay, and it takes about forty minutes for it to really get going. Cause like there was a bunch of times where I was just like, I don't think I'm gonna finish this movie. And like I was doing a lot of texting, I was doing a lot of TikToking, and then like it hits a certain point where you're like, it finally starts to, and you're like, oh, okay, like this is actually pretty entertaining. Um, and I do think that that first forty minutes is a big detriment to this movie and like i think because of that it's hard to recommend it for people to watch because it's like it's a tough tough sell like it's hard enough to get people to sit down and watch a movie for you to get sit down and watch a movie where like 40 to 60 percent of it isn't the most entertaining is tough which is why i didn't recommend the movie for you to watch it you took it upon yourself to go on there so don't be a good lad i'm just saying saying, like don't do this thing like when we get to some point where i'm like recommending stuff to you and then you're like oh man last time you recommended that honest society i knew for sure that you didn't recommend this i was just trying to you know yeah yeah yeah. just like you know be a good co-host and I, i could not do it i will say that like the last 
the half of the movie is pretty is pretty good. It reminds me of like a lot of like the I don't want to say like Disney movies, but it has like a real Disney type feel on it where it's like, you know, um I mean it's not really much of a spoiler. Like we're telling people like not really to watch this movie, but it's like, you know, um she tries to mess up all of the people that are ahead of her, but like instead what she actually winds up doing is she pushes them into things that they actually enjoy more. Mm. And she's very, very much like obsessed with the whole schooling thing. And they're not like they're just good at school. Mm -hmm. Um and they're good at this stuff, but it's like they have other interests and it's like, you know, like I said, like there's the one nerd girl who she very much wants to be a part of something and it's like she gets her into something mm -hmm. and it's like she actually winds up like really taking off with it she gains like a bunch of friends mm -hmm. and like and there's a point in the movie where like you know um she realizes like like the girl's grades have been slipping and then she's like i don't even really have to worry about her anymore but she gets in like real trouble mm -hmm. and then the girl like she comes out and she's like hey like i'm i know that like this this has been going on the girl like hugs her and she's like thank you so much like yeah. if it wasn't for you i wouldn't even be like i don't give a shit about going to the school i don't care about going to here 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 like it's way more important that like now i'm actually talking to people like i'm doing the things that i love and people are telling me that it's dope and yeah. stuff like that um there's another kid who's like um he's like a football player um and she it's kind, of, it's kind of messed up when you think about it but like she kind of picks up and, and realizes that this kid is is gay mm -hmm. and he has a crush on another kid like in the theater so like she kind of pushes that thing to happen mm -hmm. and like you know because of that like you know his grades slip a little bit he misses a couple football games or whatever but it's like he has a thing he's like yo like thank you so much like he talks to her about something she's like why are you talking to me he's like Dude, he's like, you're one of my favorite people. It's like, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have met this dude who, like, I'm madly in love with. I wouldn't have found out how much I love theater. Da, da, da. And she's kind of like, shit, like, I'm doing all this stuff. Like, I thought was going to mess these people up. And, like, really, everybody's having, like, a great time doing it. I'm the only one that's miserable. Sounds crazy. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. And, like, I don't want to say the Dustin twist because there's, like, a big twist, like, that happens at the end where I was like, damn. You can I'll say that. I'm not watching this movie. <laughs> Let's keep it all the way real. So, uh... <laughs> the whole thing comes down to is like she realizes that dustin is a virgin mm -hmm. and so like her whole plan is to like flirt with him and do all this other stuff but then she comes to realize that he's actually like a really nice guy and that she actually has a crush on him and whatever and all this uh -huh. other stuff um so she goes to go do something for him and he doesn't show up mm -hmm. and like and because of that she winds up getting a terrible grade on her midterms mm. and then like she's like she's so distraught about it like he's not picking up her calls all this other stuff she finally catches up to him and she's like, yo, what's going on? Like, where have you been? He's like, he's like, oh, you thought like this was for real. He's like, you think that I didn't peep like what you were doing to everybody else? And he's like, and I realized that you did that and I just did it to you first. Mm. And I did it better. I'll see you. He's like, I'll see you at Harvard. Mm. So he was like, or oh, no, I won't. And so I was like, oh. Oh my god. So I could just watch the last 30 minutes of the movie and be happy. Yeah, it really was. Like, yeah, he really, it really like bangs on her like mad crazy. I was like, damn. Get it, Dustin. It was hard. Like, yeah, yeah it was pretty hard. It was like, he hard. walked away with his knees rubbing together. He did, there was definitely a scene where, like, he's like, hey, come with me. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he runs like Winnie the Pooh. That's crazy. <laughs> Sorry, Dustin. Yo. <laughs> Oh man, but like yeah, oh, that's honor man. society, I guess. That, in a nutshell, no, I hope that didn't bro. take too much of everybody's oh, my time. Goodness, uh, if hilarious. this was in the theater, I feel like you could wait for it to come to streaming services. Like I, feel, I wouldn't have mm. paid money to see this movie. That's kind of like the way I looked at it. Big facts. Um, what's next? What do we got? Uh, next we have Beast. Have you seen Beast? I did see Beast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Talk about it. All right, Beast. Adris Elba. Adris Elba. Lion and the King. It's, yeah, there's there's really no other notable actors in this movie. It's just Idris versus a lion. It is so Idris Elba plays a doctor, um, whose wife had succumbed to a disease, and he's kind of he uh, because of their marital relationship, he had to break up with her, and then because the the wife died, he now has custody of the daughters again. So he decides to take them to Africa, where their mother is from to try to like have some sort of bonding experience to like uh, reconnect with them mm -hmm. um, by bringing them to the place that their mother is from. Um, while they're on like the safari and like all this other type of stuff like that, they wind up running into this lion uh, who was pretty much terrorizing them for the whole movie. It's pretty much like a Jaws, uh, Lake Placid type of movie where it's like there is this lion that is running around and like it is Idris Elba versus this lion. Mm. One of his, his best friend in the movie who was also friends with, um, well, I guess was childhood friends with his wife, mm. plays, um, so he's from Africa. He's a white guy. White dude, right? Yeah. Is that the dude from Chappie? Is he? 
I have no idea what he was from. I didn't like. I didn't recognize him. I'll look it up. Continue. Um, but he is like an, a lion expert. Like he's almost like a lion tamer. Type I love of your expression too. Is he? I was like, yeah, like I really, I was like, oh, I was like, maybe I need to see Chappie again. Um, but you know, like he realizes very quickly that this lion is different from other lions. Um, calamity takes place, and like you're kind of like that's pretty much what it is. It is Idris Elba in a broken down jeep with his best friend or like his childhood friend and his two daughters trying to survive a lion attack. Definitely from Chappie. Okay, I guess that's him. Mm-hmm. He was also in Elysium. I think he was the bad guy in at least. I didn't watch all these movies. Oh, okay. I did watch District 19 though. Um I thought this movie was really good. Like I was very much like my brother was the one who was spearheading us going to watch this movie. Like he was like, you know, we gotta watch that beast, right? No, we gotta watch this beast. Like da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I am not watching this movie with like a Dries Alba fights this line. I take I took all that back. I watched this movie with a Dries Alba fighting this line. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Hey. Everybody in the theater was very oh Oh, like a lion was scary as hell. Like, I was like, oh. it's a lion. Yeah, but it's like, <laughs> and you know, I hear it's not a regular lion. He's super strategic in the movie. So the lion has its own backstory too. Oh my goodness. So like, you start to like, you kind of like, you're not rooting for the lion because he's fighting a Dree Selba. Mm-hmm. But it's like you're not rooting against the lion. Mm-hmm. It's very like, it's, it's just, on his backstory. Yeah, like there's like it's some crazy stuff. Like you understand why the lion's lioning. Right. Like, you know, so, like, <laughs> why the lion's lioning. <laughs> um, but it's like I feel like all the characters in this movie are really well done. Like I said. Like the friend, um, who's like, like I said, like he's uh, the expert of like the terrain and stuff like that. Like he's really good. The two daughters, I think, I thought they were fantastic in this movie because like I am always very, very uh, critical of child actors because like they ruin a lot of movies like when they're not good. Mm-hmm. Um, the the two by far that always stick in my head are the, the two from King Richard. Oh, they were fantastic. I thought you were talking about awful. I thought you were going to go with the two kids from Jurassic Park. Oh, no, Park. no, no, no. Because <laughs> those are the ones that everybody always goes to. It's like the Jurassic Park kids <laughs> are awful. <laughs> but, um, but no, like they have their own very distinctive personalities. One of the sisters is like a bit older. Um, she's very much upset um, with Adri's Elba about like, you know, how things happened with her mother and the fact that like, you know, like I said, she succumbed to a disease and like he's a doctor and it's just like, yo, if you were around, like who knows what what a, you know what happened and stuff like that so like she's very much at odds with Adrisa Alba about that and the younger daughter is kind of like the peacemaker daughter but like also she has like her own uh, stuff going on but like you know how kids are very distinctive and it's like they have very distinct uh, fight or flight responses like mm-hmm. they be, they react very very differently and I think if you do watch this movie the younger daughter is definitely the thorough daughter okay where it's like oh when it's fight or flight you a fighter okay and it was just like yo like you there's a lot of things that happen you're like oh like go ahead girl like you know you're doing like a lot of that type of stuff um Adris Alba a hundred percent haymakers a lion in this movie I just need to throw that out and it is one of the most hilarious things that I've seen take place <laughs> like because he legit was like cocks back and like this line. I, was like, I was like, are we really doing this? <laughs> Hercules. <laughs> Black Superman. Right. Um, oh, my goodness. I, I also think this like this movie was in theaters. So if I was to put it on the nasty scale, I think it also belongs in the matinee. I think it's, I think it's worth the money to go see this movie. It was okay. a lot better than I thought it was. I thought Idris Elba would like... There's a couple scenes that he has where it's like, you know, he has to show like a bit of emotion like about like a lot of things. Um, as him being a father realizing that there's a, a lion right. that's coming to eat your kids and it's like you're not equipped to deal with that mm-hmm. and it's like he much he emotes really well like to the point where i was like damn man i was like yo, Dries got me feeling bad and it's like i feel like you were kind of a shitty dad but it's like now i kind of feel like you know, like this is this is quite the bonding experience i'll tell you that mostly mostly uh, i won't tell you like uh if he lives or dies or if the lion lives or dies i was like you just gonna have to watch it and figure it out i think they both kill each other and the girls get away i'm not gonna tell you what happens in the end of this movie <laughs> But Beast, I think it's I think it wanted to be a worth a watch. All right, and last but not least, the we, movie that we both saw. We both saw, um, Dragon Ball Super. Superhero. Superhero. Dragon Ball Z. Dragon, Dragon, rock the Dragon, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where I was you were going. To I was going to swear. I was going to swear man hard. And I changed my mind because, like, I know yo, some, there, there might be some children. Yo, watching. this movie is wonderful. <laughs> like, I don't even know how else to say it because it's like, it's got comedy in it, both for kids and adults. <laughs> um, like, 
you're used to seeing the old characters from the way you see them in the cartoons and they are this I mean, me right I mean in the anime I'm sorry yeah, my bad my bad in, in uh, original anime and not only are they the same characters but they have evolved because they have gotten older and it is modern day time like they got cell phones and stuff like that but some of the yo, things that are the way Piccolo's constantly yo, using the phone, using like, the this, phone like this and then when he FaceTimes he's like oh did it right. he's like where's Weeson right. Like, like, right but it's just like um like Boma's character for instance is just like like it's it's super hilarious to see how they are now and i think um, it's the most dragon ball that dragon ball z has been in quite some time yes like it's been very like super serious they, but like uh, original dragon ball was right. very comedic and stuff like that I, and like i feel like right. they went back to that and i feel like like if this was made live action the actual story would make sense yeah like it's not just an anime it's not just another episode like they really pulled out all the stops and making sure that this movie was enjoyable the action of course we knew the action was oh, it's through, it's all cheap. as soon as it got rocking there was no part of the development in each part of the fight where you wasn't like what just happened <laughs> you're doing what right now now i've been telling you how i've been telling you <laughs> watching these anime movies in the theaters with an anime crowd is different yeah watching this movie yeah. with the anime crowd was yeah, different listen. wasn't it it made me feel better because when i go to the movies with joel <laughs> I'm one of those people that like I'm super animated and don't go in there. Don't oh, go in there. No. Oh, you about to get popped. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. That's Oh, you a sucker. You a lot of that sucker. Oh man. And every time I do something, Joel's like Oh my god, that's King Richard, yeah. <laughs> I could go. I don't do I don't do all that. I could be like, oh, here we go. <sighs> I'll mess around and be like, I'll go to lower my screen. You better be low. You better be putting that on me. <laughs> Yo, before the movie even got started, the title came up and the mad people would have just like, oh yeah, here we go. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I look over at Joel. He's like, cringy. I was like, Yo, was just like, you know this what? Is how, this is how the anime movies yeah. are. Is they get hype, bro. I felt in my bag. I was like, there's more of me in here. <laughs> There's more of me in here. I was like, we about to have a good old time. But it, there was a stranger on the left of me. I hit him with a few of these. Huh? The dude huh? next to the dude next to me hit me with one of these <laughs> when something happened and I leaned into it. I said, This is a, this is immaculate right now. I was like, and my brother looked at me and I was like, I don't even know how to remote properly. Like what's going yeah, on? Because mind you, like, you know, I'm a big dude. You getting them seats, get the leaning back. I'm taking both arm rests, right? So he's kind of in the seat like this. But once the movie got good, I started hitting. He was like, "Whoa!" This is I was like, "Yes, yes, this is happening. This is happening right now." I would definitely go see this movie again. Out of all the movies that we have on here, Dragon Ball's up number one. We know that the like the way that these have been is these Dragon Ball movies have come out and then they've adapted them into the Dragon Ball Super anime. Mm -hmm. I when it comes out in anime, I was like, I'm probably gonna enjoy this. I think. This is tough between it. What's better, this one or Dragon Ball Super Broly? But it's like this one's up there. I, it's definitely better than the Battle of the Gods, I, I, and I think it's better than Resurrection F, which yes. is the Freezer. And I feel like the direction of like new content in which they went in with with this one makes it better than those. First of all, this is the Piccolo movie. Yes. Let's talk about like my guy, yeah. my man's the mean yeah. green bean. My, Get my, in, in here. My son Sean does looked at me and was like. I'm glad they finally didn't play Piccolo because he feels like he's the brother on his show. It's just he like, yo, why do I keep doing the brother dirty? Like, my man's out. Why do I keep doing the brother dirty? He did not get dead dirty this movie. Like, yo, keep it all the way real. This man's the glue that's holding all these people together. together. Everybody, man, I'm telling you. The thing is, like, I'm telling you, man. you think about like when Goku has to ask people to do stuff. Like, it's like, oh, it's Goku. I can't say no to him. I feel right. like Piccolo comes around and asks people to do stuff, and they're like. I'm just gonna do it just because I bangs that you pick. Right. Like I got, I got right. to show up for my man. Right. Like, right. They're like, yo. Right. And he lightweight raised everybody's kids. Yo, <laughs> there's a there's a point in this movie where like something happens and like all the characters that are in there. I'm like, I'm pretty sure Piccolo raised every, every single, single last one. Every of these single kids. one of them. And, and, it's like, and he's and a current, good. He's and a currently good dad. raising another one. <laughs> granddaughter. It's like you don't know how to be a dad. <laughs> okay. It, I came very close and I didn't. Mm -hmm. When Pan flew at the end of the movie and Piccolo saw it, did you did you did you get the feeling in your I heart? I think he was more of a proud father than her actual than father. Gohan was. Than <laughs> her actual father. 
Um, I think one of the things that I really enjoyed about the movie, too, is just, like, after watching all these anime series of Dragon Ball Z, like, you're always waiting for the next thing. And they always make you wait six episodes before that <laughs> thing happens. They got like, it shaken. They got it. Not only do they get it shaken, like, a lot of stuff that you've been waiting for to happen and all these years of Dragon Ball Z happened in this movie. Like, uh, I'm not... Well, you want to set up what the movie actually is about or something, or you want to keep going with your thing? I handle what you what you doing. I can segue into it. Go ahead. Handle so it. should we go spoilers or are we not going spoilers on this movie? Let's do non spoiler. Okay. And then we'll watch we'll call it into the spoiler. Okay, so so this is all um modern day Dragon Ball. And what they're doing is the uh the Red Ribbon Army, which Goku had defeated when he was like During Dragon Ball. They're in Dragon Ball. Um, they ha- have come back and they're trying to redo the whole Android situation. And they have adopted the grandson of Dr. Zero. Dr. Zero. And they have convinced him that Goku and his homies are an alien race that are trying to enslave the world in order to get him to join forces with them to uh, make new androids to kill off. Which they're not a hundred percent wrong because Goku and them are aliens, and it's like they are technically set to planets to enslave them. They are. The only thing is, like, I think they do the Bulma angle where it's like, you know, because they're like, oh, Capsule Corp right. is working with the it's aliens and they're going to enslave up. everybody. Right, and all that right, stuff. right, right. So they they make new androids. Um, Gim, my boys, Gamma One and Gamma, Gamma Two. Gamma One and Gamma yo, Two. Gamma One and Gamma Two went hard. I was like, yo. Uh, like if when, well, I was like, when the new Thorough. Dragon Ball Fighters comes out, whatever comes me, out. I know they all have different colors, but if I'm naming three brothers, it's Gamma One, Gamma Two. It was definitely brothers. It was definitely they brothers. Was definitely, <laughs> not only was they brothers, they was brothers. <laughs> what's the what's the meme where it's like? That, I think this is Negroes. He's like, this ain't white folks. This is this Negroes. This could be white folks. But, but I, I think this is Negroes. Negroes. Like, yes. I was like, yes. these is brothers. Yes. Like, yeah, like, um, yes. Give them one and give it to them. And like, do you have a favor of of which, of which one? Nah, because they both had they both they both had their epic moments, man. They both had very distinct if I, personalities. If I had too. to make a choice, I'm gonna go Gamma Two. Gamma Two went hard. He was my favorite. I was waiting for you to stop talking I'm so I can tell you it was Gamma Two. Gamma Two went hard. Two. Yeah, cause it, yeah, yeah, cause yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't even want to ruin it. He I don't, even, he I don't was, even want to do spoilers at this point. He like, was I very, like he, he was, was very. Can you force great Sega Manish? Mm-hmm. Where it's like he's because that's the thing is the Doctor Zero's grandson is very much into superheroes. Yes. So like he's designing androids to be superheroes. So he right. gives them these certain personalities. Right. And like Gamma Two is definitely the more expressive, like goofier version of like a superhero. While yes. Number One is very stoic. He's kind of he's yeah. actually kind of like Piccolo. Now that I think about it, he's very much like does he's a man of few words. Like he's about the rules and like all this other stuff or it's whatever. Kind of like and. Android seventeen and eighteen. I guess we could kind of do that. Like eight, like seventeen. Gamma two would be the dark hair one, and eighteen would be the female one that ended up with with Krillin. Krillin, who shows up in this movie. She definitely, shows up. She definitely shows up. I thought that seventeen and eighteen were going to show up and kind of be like. I think we've been here before. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's coming up. Right. But they did it. They did it. Though. Yeah. So I, I listen. Th- this movie is fire. This movie is fire. All right. So like. Now we're getting into to spoiler territories. There's a new cell. <laughs> Yo. Honestly. Fam. Honestly. What? My least favorite part of the movie, though. I got I to gotta be honest. Bro. Like, I was like, Cell uh, Max didn't do it for me like that. Cell Max got it popping for me. <laughs> you got to shake it, though. <laughs> I think it was just the the fact that uh, of all the cell forms you chose, you chose the second form, which is like his shittiest one. Listen. <laughs> the one with the big lips and all that. The reason I respected Cell Max is because he brought on Piccolo Max. <laughs> like, if, if that's what I'm going to call him. Orange I know they call him Orange Piccolo. I'm going to yeah, Piccolo, Piccolo Max. Yeah, like, PM, baby. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There was almost a tear shed when he became Orange Piccolo. I was like, yeah. it's like finally. Finally, this man got right, man. So so what I was saying is like a lot of stuff happened that you've been waiting to happen. So Piccolo finally gets to become the guy. He finally he gets to be the G. You know, Even I mean? though Gohan kind of tra- upstages him for a second. Yep. And I have mixed feelings about the Gohan's new form. I okay, so that's feeling. another one. Gohan finally snaps out of this whack. I'm doing oh, all I'm this all regular in. stuff. Who and... are your three favorite Dragon Ball characters? Because like ever, yeah. Period. Like Dragon Ball Z. Games. In order. I mean, I know mine in order, but you could do yours. And if you don't have them in order, you could just do them. Um. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna go. 
I wonder if we have the same ones. It's a tough third. That tough third. Dang, man. All right, my one and two is Vegeta and Goku. I'm, okay. I'm pro okay. Vegeta over Goku. Good. Okay. Vegeta's my number two. All right. I'm assuming Goku's your number one. He is not. Goku's nowhere near one of my favorite Dragon Ball characters. Ooh. Yeah, man. I'm not going to say that it I don't like him. I just like, I just like other people better than Goku. Got Goku, you. There's a lot of things about him that annoy me. Got you. Um, My third. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's so tough. It's so tough, man, because it's between Piccolo and Jiren. Oh, you like Jiren. A lot of people don't like him. That's the only reason I throw him out. Now, Jiren's out. Jiren gives you that work, bro. Uh, Piccolo's my number three. Okay. Vegeta's my number two, mm-hmm. and Gohan's always been my number one. Okay. And, like, I always feel like my three guys are always getting hoed out. Yeah. So then we get to I, this movie Gohan, where all my three guys have their moments to shine, yeah. and I was like, finally! I just... The, the only reason Gohan doesn't crack my top three is, like, somebody always has to get murked for you to actually fight, bro. Like, won't you just <laughs> fight, fam? Yeah, bro was 13 by just, himself. Just he, fight, fam. He, he, just he, fight, fam. You don't have to get murked for you to fight. <laughs> Yo, man, like, I'm trying to go to school. People all had to, had, almost had to get murked for you to fight. Y'all, y'all, y'all train every day. I'm trying to go to school. Piccolo had every... to false kidnap your daughter for you to Piccolo, get thorough. Piccolo's honestly, like, the same age as Gohan, too, which is kind of crazy. What do you think about Yo, that? listen, man. Listen, man. <laughs> Everybody need to get his life together. <laughs> but like his transformation was, was dope. I like how he was mad quirky too. Like when he when he powered down, he was like, I need my glasses back. <laughs> but like, like when I, I like how Piccolo is like our voice. Mm-hmm. Like he asks a lot of questions that like we ask. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like he's just like, wait. So when he turns super saiyan, like you can see? Right. It's like, but right. like he'll ask like like things that like that. Makes no sense. <laughs> but I Pan, I thought was pretty good in this movie. Pan was dope. They kind of hold out Krillin a little bit. I mean, that's his part now, bro. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Nah, but. Krillin's always. Been I mean, like, he got to come through with a little, with a couple discs. We ain't seen him throw a he disc. He did throw in one. Minute. He threw one disc to save Android eighteen. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, I gave a strong like, yeah, oh, wifey move, wifey move, let go, wifey move. What? It's one of those like, you know how like um when you're watching a regular episode of Dragon Ball Z, mm-hmm. and it's like it is kind of like the. Like Piccolo's fighting a certain person or like whatever, and then like all of a sudden a random beam comes in and you recognize the beam and you're like, and you're like Tian mm-hmm. Shenhan, <laughs> like it's mm-hmm. like you, know, you do that, yep. like that's how it was when when you just like when you see it and then you hear the scene like this Dark Throne disc and I was like let's go, yep, I was like let's go, my man. <laughs> I love the fact that Gohan uh, properly let everybody know who his real daddy was by using the finishing move of Piccolo and, was, and, and like literally my ha- my hairs are standing up right now, like my hair stood up at the time. I was like, use the move your daddy taught you, and he. And and he hit him with that uh that kung fu panda line. He was just like, I never taught you that. He's like, I kind of figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and of course, the most epic moment ever. Uh, ever. V- Vegeta finally beats Goku. Finally. Finally beats, beats Kakarot. Goku. Yeah. Finally beats Kakarot. And everybody's like, well, it's finally happening. And, and the one girl's like, oh, this is so like, whack. And Broly's sitting there like- crying like... This is the best thing. Ever. <laughs> this is the best thing. <laughs> the thing I ever watched in my life. <laughs> yeah. So like, so, Broly's in the fold now. Uh huh. And I like I like how they're constantly always bringing up Jiren. Mm-hmm. So it's like we always get like that thing of him just like yeah. being mad thorough and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's like Jiren's a G, bro. <laughs> Jiren is a G. I don't care. Nobody say y'all can feel however y'all want to feel about him. Like out of all the people that they fought, and I know it has to keep progressing, but this man has been the most thorough. All I'm all I want to say is. Y'all not getting no dubs if you're not jumping me. Y'all had to jump my man to get him out. Who? Jiren. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They had yeah, yeah. Frieza, 17, yes. Vegeta, yes. and Goku taking on Jiren. And he, still... and he was still getting right. And, and I feel like he still had another transformation at him and just didn't get a chance to get to it. Like, like y'all, there's it, still a lot of shells to that man. If there wasn't a ring out rule, like, he probably would have still got that dub. Mm-hmm. Like, y'all had to ring that man out. And it was like, you had to, like, literally, like, Frieza and Goku had to combine We're together. Standing to there looking like homie from the Green Mile. Like he's a brother too. Jaren's a brother too. Jaren's a, uh, Jaren's a homie. Come on now. Come on now. Uh-huh. Jaren's been a brother. Uh-huh. We've been on that for real. So I, I like listen. Y'all not fooling me at all, man. I know what's going on, but yeah, Jaren and Piccolo is like a tight three. If I had to make a pick, I'm gonna go with Piccolo just because he got more screen time. But this is the man, Piccolo movie. That's that what I'm saying. That man, Jaren. Like yeah, it's it's technically the Piccolo Gohan movie, but it's like this is very much the Piccolo movie. Like he is literally. 
does everything and like has he's an active antagonist in this right. movie like everything that happens happens because of him like he's figuring a lot of stuff we get to see piccolo being smart we get to see piccolo being funny we get to see him being strong we get to see him being brave like Stealth. he does everything he does all everything Bro, that brother is nine feet tall and don't nobody notice that right. like he's wearing somebody's right. costume and i think it's pretty dope too that um i think you brought this up when you said that they I like you like the fact that they didn't make this movie about Goku and Vegeta. Absolutely, they, yeah. They, like they they were in the movie, but they're they're pretty much like co-starring. Yeah, there's a, they're they're the B. They're not even a B plot. They're like a C to D plot in this right, movie because it's all Gohan and Piccolo. It's all Gohan. Because like, but they do do the thing. It's like, yo, something crazy is happening. What what do you do? You call Goku and Vegeta, right? But then it's like, but what happens when you can't get in touch with Goku and Vegeta? It's right. like, yo, the rest of y'all gotta have to step, step up. up. Step if there if there's one person in this movie that got hope, it's Gotenks. Gotenks oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Gotenks, Gotenks yeah, yeah. didn't get his moment to. And I thought shot. they was gonna be thorough too because they showed up in their old teenage. Yeah, friend. they was looking. One everybody of them had like was... a little puffy vest on. I was like, yo, these little dudes look like they might have been getting it. In. I was waiting for them to one of them to like, oh, we gotta fight, warm up with the super fast punches. Like, ah, I'm yeah. ready. Ah, I'm ready. <laughs> no, I was, that's not what they got. I was waiting for them to do something along the lines of like, oh, you guys think we haven't been training? I don't even think they turned Super Saiyan. They didn't. They didn't get a chance. They didn't, right? No. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They got hold out in this movie. Yeah, they did. Because, like, even, like I said, Krillin got a time to shine. 18 kind of did did a little work. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think who else showed up. Somebody else showed up with them. We didn't get Yamcha. We didn't get Tien. We didn't get Chaozu. Nope. Um, that was it. Yeah, that is it. Yeah. But, yo, Game, game of 1 and Game of 2, man. But, like, welcome, welcome, sure. welcome to the Z Fighter, like, pantheon. Like, now you're going to be in the video games and stuff like that. And I thought you both were super thorough. And, like, you got a fan well, here. Well, it's only one because the other one got Infinity War. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We didn't need to go there. At the same time, they are androids. You just make another one. Oh, yeah. If he has the uh, makeup, right? Yeah. Mr. Stark, sense. I don't feel so good. <laughs> that definitely it's happened like, to The battlefield is, the floor is no place for a soldier to be on the battlefield. Gamma. I ain't going to tell you which number. You still have to figure that out. I am you? good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, man. Listen. Do, if, do we just spend putting... two and a half hours just talking about TV shows and movies? Yes. Okay. If, I just we, had, to... if we had to put this on the Nazi scale. Uh, no, full price this full price this mother effort. That's all yeah. I got to say. It's like, this movie's full price. Yeah, yeah. Get ready to see it in my top 10 movies at the end of this year. It's above Day Shift. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so like, that's all I say. It's above Prey. I'll tell you that right now. But, so like, I, also I wanted you to see is like, you see what I mean when I tell you about like how anime movies, they, they do their movies differently. They do all their exposition in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, now that you know all this stuff, mm -hmm. now it's all action for There's the end like, of it. Water with lemon, salad, bread and butter, now it's time to eat. <laughs> it's like, now it's time to eat. That's it. And they do it really. And they've done it. Like I saw the Jujutsu Kaisen movie. It was the same thing. Uh, My Hero Academia movie is the same thing. Where it's like for the first like half an hour, you're kind of just like, uh, like this is like a lot going on. But then like once it starts getting shaken, you like, I'm glad that they did all that in the beginning. So that way I, that I'm, I know where I'm at and I know what I'm supposed to be paying attention to. Mm -hmm. And it's like now things are getting shaken and it's like I'm with it. Big like, facts. Uh, Big facts. All right. All right. Here we go. Um... We don't have anything for her. We're checking. Okay. Save time there. All right. There you go. Um, home cooking. I do have an announcement. I'm coming home again. Do you think about me now and then? Do you think about me now and then? Cause I'm coming home again. It's time for some home cooking. For big nasty and no cool reason. Shout out to LeVar Click Bruce. <laughs> bleh, bleh, bleh. So the voting had nobody up. messing with my click, click, I should have known. click, <laughs> click. So um, voting happened for the special election on Tuesday, mm -hmm. um, and he took off with thirty something percent of the votes. Ooh. So he ended up with three hundred and sixty five votes. The next candidate had about three fifteen. Everybody else had. 100 or lower okay so the city spoke and the city got it right and i love when the city gets it right um what i will tell people is not to be to be mindful that while this um what's the word i'm looking for something that's before something major primary 
there we go. Why this primary um, impromptu election happened, this is not the end all be all. So they're taking the top two candidates, which is him and Ed Collins, and they will be debating against each other for the next few weeks till the September 13th election. And that's when the real vote will happen to pick between the top two candidates, okay. which is LeVar Click Bruce and Ed Collins. Does that mean that we're getting LeVar on the show? So what's happening? Hey, I don't got a problem with it. I'll talk to the homies, get them on the show, man. Go right. just join on the gram, get some, throw it on the book. Do everything we got to do to make sure everybody get Why'd out of the book. Why'd you throw the hand up when you said the book? You tried to make Facebook sound as cool as you possibly could. I did. Um, um, listen, you know me. Y'all lucky I'm on the gram. I'm only doing that for this. I think you might need a charger for this, too. Let's throw that out. Ooh. I know that's all you have for the bunch, we call it. Um, um, I, I believe so. Well, you know it's that season for uh, youth football. Yep. So the young boys is out there. And then the even younger boys is out there, you know, so I'm excited for that. I love this time, this part of time of the city because this is where kids are um, more active and community stuff and they're not running around in the streets. Not saying that that's what these kids are doing, but it's just it's There's giving them an outlet. Them, yeah, with so much stuff, so much agricultural stuff being taken away from the kids. This is something that they can do to keep their mind at ease. Look at you using so words like agriculture. Yeah, you know, soothe anxiety, take away the stress. It gives them somewhere to go. And just be kids, hmm. you know. We need to have more platforms like that for our children. So can't wait, can't wait. Um, man, get out my way! Watch out as I come through, busting in your line, cracking numbers in two. When I bring the pain, man, what you gonna do? Now lace up your cleats and get shook out your shoes. Clean out your locker. I'm out to get you. What's going on? It's the Blitz. <laughs> um, we only got two topics for the Blitz. Um, so there's been a lot of preseason football, but like I don't know how much you've been watching. Like I know you're undefeated. Yeah, I was gonna say I know you beat my guys the other day, but I was yeah, like I didn't even watch the game. So nah, it's just preseason. Yeah, like it's there's only been a couple guys, Josh Jacobs included, of who right. have actually important people who have played. Right. Um, I usually don't pay attention to the last week, which I think is this week. Mm-hmm. Is that? Mm-hmm. Um, but football it's like it's way. more importantly, fantasy football season is coming. Yes, That's more important. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, so I know that um, the biggest topic. Right now is the overturn of the Sean Watson verdict. Yep. Um, so instead of six games, he's getting 11 games, I believe. Yeah. And instead of no financial compensation, he now has to pay out $5 million. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how this overturn happened. I don't know if it went through the course or this is just a decision that the NFL made. Um, what are your thoughts? I don't understand how this brother's playing this season. Like 11 games is, yes, it's more than six, but it's like, he should not be allowed to play this season. Granted, he didn't play last year, mm-hmm. but it was like he didn't play last year because like they made him not. Like he just kind of sat out and collected his check and then went and collected a fatter check. And it's just crazy to me that he's allowed to treat uh women the way that he decides to treat them, but like he's still able to play football. I think it's a very bad precedence to send. Um, I think the just the what you call it, just um, being suspended for a season was the minimum that they could have done, and they didn't even meet that. Um, I know for a fact I'm not going to be drafting them on, on any of my fantasy football rosters. I'm all set on Deshaun Watson. Period. Um, I, I don't want to wish up badly that he doesn't perform well and stuff like that, but it's just like I you won't catch me on here giving praise to Deshaun Watson this season, at, at least this season. There you go. Uh, it's well said. I don't, I don't have anything to add to it. Okay. Anything to add to it. Um, there are two things. Madden also dropped. Madden did drop. I haven't got it yet. I don't think I'm going to get it, but I have heard that this is a better version. That's How cool. much of a better version? That I'm not sure. Uh, people are saying that it's been better than like the last four or five Maddens, which is not really saying a lot because it didn't join us with Cheeks. Um, but like I'm gonna be doing what I always do. Like usually, like around like Christmas and stuff like that, they drop, they bump it down by like fifty percent or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'll be getting that, Madden. There you go. Like around that. There you go. <clears throat> so there was two things I wanted to talk about. None of them, neither of them, have anything to do with football. But we don't have like a fight section. Okay. So um, news has come out that John Jones may be returning to the UFC. Okay. Um, to fight in the heavyweight division because he's always fought light heavyweight. Mm-hmm. So he wants to contend for the heavyweight title. I don't know what's going to happen from that, but we'll see what happens. And this weekend, um, Usman lost his belt. He did. 
I don't know if you watched the fight or not. It was it was pretty crazy. A lucky I kick. I don't know how this happened. It was literally total domination other than the first round. That was a little sketchy. Total domination. You literally could have ran around the ring like a sucker for the last minute and a half if you wanted to. But he put himself out there. Kid threw a kick. Landed well, right he, threw the, right he thought a punch was coming. He fainted. He punch. thought the punch was coming and the kick came instead. Right. And like, yo. But even like when like he fainted light. away from the punch. Like, light. like he was comfortable. Yeah, and like he kind of like fainted away where his face was. Oh, he didn't. He didn't faint away to like. He almost. Looked, it looked like he was like literally lining up for the kick. Like the way that he right. ended up. Right. Like, no, it was like he was just like, oh, this kick's coming. Let me make sure. Ooh, it's a controversy. Get paid. I'm just. I'm not, I don't Best believe three. Best I'm, three. I've uh, never been that person that believes in conspiracy theories and stuff like that. Like nah, I don't because, think this will happen. Because if that like, was an acting like, job, you give him an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor because that that man was yeah, he needed, frozen. He needed a next support. That man was Elsa laying down there. That man was, looked like he was trying to reach for a cup of water that wasn't there. It was just <laughs> like. I was I was sorely disappointed. Like, and he was one of the only people that had the chance to contend with Anderson Silva's consecutive wins and title defenses. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. So the um, the number is sixteen for Anderson Silva. He's at fifteen. If he won this fight, he would have been tied, mm-hmm. looking to break the record with his next fight. Mm. Not all that's gone. Yeah. So let you know man until that bell is rung and they tell you that the fight is over don't get out there getting cute and just like i mean he was winning the fight he clearly the cards was were it was undeniably going to be his fight and he slipped up and got slipped straight like that yeah all right last story um i really wanted to bring this up i was watching espn the other day and the story came up about a kid named caleb wagner that sounds so familiar um, so he's going into his senior year. Mm-hmm. Um, I tell you, huh, of high, high school. school. Um, he has no offers, but he just recently broke Derrick Henry's high school ah, football that's record. Wise. Yes. Um, aside from that, he also only has one full operating arm. So like he has like a half an arm on the other side of his body. Kind of like Hansel. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, I think his is a little longer than Hansel, but same, same, same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but, got one arm. Right. So, and Kid is a dog. He plays running back, clearly, because he broke Derrick Henry's record. But um, he has no offers. He doesn't know it's because of um, his appendage or not. But he is most, going into his, it is. to his senior year, and he's just trying to, you know, um, make, make, make way for his dream. You know, so if anybody's out there seeing him, um, on social media or you're in his town watching his games or you see him on TV, I would say support the kid, man. See what he got. You know what I mean? You're like, you never know what's going to happen until it happens. So I think he, he definitely deserves a chance at, to go play college ball somewhere. Um, it, it was a pretty dope story. I think one of the things that stuck out to me the most was when he, he said that um, – they asked him, do you think you would have D1 offers if you had another arm? He was like, I would like to say yes, but I feel like if I had another arm, I may not have worked as hard and not be where I am right now. So It's a hell of an outlook. Yeah. Especially yeah, for a high school kid. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, again, his name is Caleb Wagner. Um, you know what? I think it doesn't do any justice if I don't tell you exactly what the record is that he broke. Um, so I'm going to tell you. Was it, was it Derrick Henry's rushing yards <clears throat> or rushing touchdowns? It had to be one of those two, right? Uh, I want to say it was both. But we'll he broke see. both of them? What high school does he play for? How have I, like, how have I not uh, seen anything? He breaks his Russian, He broke his rushing record. Okay, so rushing yards. Yes. Yep. Um, he plays. Here's his max prep. He plays for Baker High School in Baker, Florida. Wait, he's a Florida kid breaking all these records and nobody's got him an offer yet? Mm-hmm. Or does he have no offers or does he have no oh, D1 wait. offers? Um, no, he has no offers. He has That's no kind of offers. Crazy. This is his senior year that he's going into now. Um, he's 6'1", 205 pounds, and he also plays corner. Huh. Which is pretty dope. He curr- One of the Griffins. He currently has, has 3,448 rushing yards. Damn. <laughs> that's a lot. And 39 touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, damn. Like, like, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> on 285 carries. The one of the he Griffin one of the Griffin brothers is missing a hand. That but he plays defensive line, if I'm not mistaken, right? It's like a linebacker. A linebacker. Yeah, like, that's not Shaquille. Dogs. I want to say it is. I think Shaquille's the corner. Okay, you may be right. 
Shaquille Griffin? Their names are very similar. Okay. But and then you have I mean, Jason Pierre-Paul, who doesn't have a hand because... Right. You know, so it proves that it's possible. Yeah. I mean, but he was already in the league when he lost his hand. Yeah. but And the offense is, is like a tough thing, especially as a running back. Like, that's ball security that you just don't right. have. Right. Right. But at the same time, it's like, I got a bone that I can, you know, throw out there. Yeah. So, we'll see. I'm not trying to be funny. So, it's a serious question. Does he put a glove on it? Um, And all the highlights I've seen, No. I didn't even see if he like if he had a sleeve on it or nothing like that. Hmm, okay. So from what from like in the practices that I watched him as well, like he ran a couple routes, cut a couple passes and everything. So I mean, kid is legit, man. You know, let's we'll see what happens. Okay. I mean, the worst thing that happens is what, he's not good at football at the next level? All right. Okay. You never you don't know unless you give him a shot. Sure that. So, you don't shout, know what you don't know. Right. So shout out to the little homie Caleb Wagner, man. I hope the best for you. Oh, do you have a raisinette? I do not have a raisinette. You have I a don't cultural gem. Cultural gem. This is the first time that you slipped up on a cultural gem, I think. Oh shoot. Do you want me to wing it? No, no, no. Like, listen, like I think this episode's run pretty long, mm -hmm. as it has been. Um, I already said that I'm gonna save um my what you call it, my heavyweight lover segment for the next episode. So like we'll just make sure that you're prepared for that. This um, is what I'll do. I'll make sure to get a cultural gem that has a sequel. Boom. That's a really weird thing to put on there, but uh, it's like all right. Challenging myself. Um hey, hey, whatever, whatever it takes to get you to be the best version of yourself, you know what I mean? Um yeah, like I think that like we took way too long of a break between these last two episodes. It's been like what two weeks, if not two and a half weeks. Yeah, man. So like that's one of the reasons why we've been so backloaded with movies and TV shows. So like hopefully that ain't like, the only reason either. Check somebody, Graham. They've been popping. I kind of let's not let's not do that. Don't, I, I kind of been chilling this last couple of weeks. This brother been out here. Nah, don't do that. Shaking his don't tail. Don't do man. that. Don't start things that man, don't man. need to be started. I was like, man, I want to be like Joel when I grow up. <laughs> Those are, don't start things that don't need to be started. Just like, but well, I'm saying we you're just, enjoying we, your summer, we've been man. Busy. We've the been man busy. who says summer is not going to end is enjoying his summer. I think summer lasts. And I'm pretty sure we segued into that going into the summer. Like, you know, we're going to see episodes a little further stretched out because we're, you know, the self care is important. Yeah. So I'm happy you're taking care of yourself. Appreciate it. You know, I appreciate you. Yeah. This don't work. You know what I mean? That's it. This this don't this don't work. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to say this something. Like, that was like, worth something. I was like, there's nothing clever. Now. There's nothing on there. And I was gonna let it go, but I was just like, I can't let it go. <laughs> um like I said, like oh, there's a lot man. of there's I don't think there's any big marquee movies that are getting ready to come out. I think we're pretty much gonna be giving updates on a lot of the shows mm -hmm. that we're watching. I am watching a couple of stuff that like is close to finishing. That's the only reason I didn't want to pile it on with like a lot of the stuff that's on here. Okay. Um, I'm gonna see like what movies are because like I looked at the the list the other day and I was like, oh, I guess I could see this or I could see this, and I was just like, I don't think I'm gonna force myself to do yeah, it. Yeah, don't do it. Um, don't do it. So the heavyweight lovers for next week. So I'm going to start a new series. Um, it's going to be Red Flag Alert. Ooh. So it's kind of just kind of give you guys like um, I think. Can I it, segue off of that with my with, with my heavyweight lovers? You had a you had a, a bunch of them called Red Red Flag Alerts for married couples or trying to get married. Yes, <laughs> definitely some red flags to look for. What was yours? Huh? So like my, I'm going to be doing like specific key terms, like more or less like. Uh, things that people do that like if they are they're doing these things so like my first episode is gonna or like my first in the series is gonna be on gaslighting mm -hmm. and it's like what gaslighting is what it looks like in a relationship and like when you see it how to either avoid it or how to realize like you know what if this is the type of person that this is gonna be i gotta skedaddle mm. um i know that i was doing the know your role but i i realized that the know your role next one was supposed to be like husband and wife okay and seeing as i have not been a husband or a wife it was like it was gonna be pretty difficult to go on there and i feel like if you're at the point when you are husband and wife mm -hmm. at this point in time you should already know what your roles are there shouldn't mm. really be a question so like i was wondering what my next segment was going to be and i think that the red flag alert was a much bigger thing to get into okay um, so that way like you know people can identify certain things i think it'll hopefully it'll help people who are in emotionally abusive relationships or mm. are in a potential emotionally abusive relationship mm. to see the signs to that that way they can either get help or get out so that, mm. you know what i mean so that's where i'm going and like i said first in the series gaslighting because i think of, that's another that's a term that we've been hearing quite a bit but like a lot of people haven't been getting right what it actually is so. say that again 
Uh, I think a lot of people have been using this term and they keep saying it, but they're not using it correctly because they don't actually truly know what it is. And I know that that's the case because when I went to go double check at what I thought gaslighting was, I found like so many videos that everybody was talking about completely different things. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I had to like literally cross section it to like be like, no, this is legit gaslighting. Like mm -hmm. what everybody else is talking about is not the same thing. Yeah, They're actually a vocabulary word that hit right before the summer and they was like, I'm gonna use this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so like yeah, it was just it's been a hot word to use, especially when people feel like they're getting attacked. It's like, are you gaslighting me? Yeah. And it's like that's You're not, not that important to be gaslit. <laughs> 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 So you guys, can look out of that. <laughs> you guys can look out for that on episode 60. Raise, you got anything else you want to say before you go? Nah, peace. Peace.